10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Don't be well, mistaken. You got to see breaking. See breaking. Yeah. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good golly, Miss Molly. Welcome to another copyright busting. As I've already had the warnings. Copyright busting episode of the Canon Film Club, where you can't play nothing without YouTube, the gods of YouTube going, oh, you naughty boy. But yeah, here we are for, uh, we're going to push it to pop it. We're going to rock it to lock it, and we're going to break it to make it, which is like me getting up in the morning. <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. 
<laughs> so welcome everybody where we do we take a bit of a departure today by instead of talking about our normal action and martial arts fest of canon films we're going to two of the do two of their most celebrated and indeed two of the most commercially successful movies uh break in and break into electric boogaloo so today we're gonna we're gonna you know have so have a bit of a the cell, your canon captured the zeitgeist with these movies. We have to say they didn't invent this stuff. They didn't invent breakdancing. No. They didn't invent hip hop or rap. But they certainly made these movies at just the right time. Yes, and and didn't even end up being a bit of a cash grab because they actually got some of the right people involved. So it was pretty cool stuff. Uh, so we're going to be having a lot of fun talking about those now. And as Tom Corner said on Midnight's Edge. Why have you not included Rappin', the third one? I said, because it wasn't a, de it's a sequel in name only right. to break into no plot connection whatsoever. None of the same characters. So so I decided to just keep it to break in and break into. We'll kind of mix these two up as we go. So anyway, welcome to, uh, do you think Ice-T might join us, your Muslim uncle? You never know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, know. I would be surprised, but... <laughs> Right. <laughs> I, I'd love it if he did. He's an awesome guy. But um, so <coughs> welcome to everybody in the chat. We'll just catch up with you all in a minute. But also welcome to the. Uh, there'll be a few others joining us as we go. But welcome to the wonderful people who are with us already. And first of all, my resident expert on hip hop and funky soul music, Imperatus. Say what? Huh? Right? <laughs> you are barking up the wrong tree for him. So, so tell me, um, is there a lot of break dancing in the death metal scene? No. No, there's not. <laughs> You're distressing him, Brian. Oh, God. I mean, shit. I'm at a point, though, in my, in my older years where I don't even go anywhere near the stage. Oh, there's a show. Where's Bill? Sitting at the bar. That's right. Yeah. right. That's your dance. Yeah. Yeah. Me too, mate. That's why I got in the rock. I didn't have to dance. All I have to do is go like this. That's it. Even that I can't yeah. do now because I get a sore neck and my shoulders hurt. But I've uh, had my years of stage diving and crowd surfing. Thank indeed. you. Indeed, me too. And um, I'm surprised I survived that. Uh, John, buddy, don't worry about it. John Das Wolf and valuable and loyal member of the It's Only Talk and Roll Stroke Canon Film Club crew. You got to work today, mate. Sorry about Sorry for your loss having to work, but right. thank you for touching base, buddy. We love you, and we'll see you in the next show. Thanks for, for at least popping by. And we miss you. And also joining us today is a new, hopefully regular member of the crew for all sorts of shows going forward, Little Chad. Hello. Hey, I definitely can vouch for Imp's uh, love of hip hop and R and B after mm -hmm. our music trivia that I made the other day on our channel. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> where Did he was having the... visceral reactions in chat to anything that was R and B and or hip hop. So he doesn't know he's Africa Bambata, or, <laughs> or uh, you know Funkadelic. Doesn't know any of that. That's to Imp. I'm, I'm so. Sorry. I'll say the same thing I said Friday night. <laughs> God's help you, Ivor. Put the, some trivia together. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, we we should do that. But then again, you'd win. So not even Nick Weiser would get them all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Chad, how are you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm excited. I I've I grew up literally on Canon films, so I'm always always pleased to be able to talk to him about them, including Breaking. I'm not some snob who only watched the action movies. <laughs> Uh, I typically am, but not in this case. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I do watch a lot of different movies, but I, I tend to focus on the action ones. But it's a good point because Canon Film Club so far has been pretty much action oriented uh, because they made such great action movies. But these two really did capture the zeitgeist, as we say. And it, as a rock guy, one thing I do like, and I do have broader tastes in general, and I'm not a big dance guy, but I love that style of dancing that was popularized in these movies and then since obviously dominated the world many times over i actually love that stuff because it's so different i don't like your old jazz dancing stuff which you see a bit of in breaking i like the hip -hop you stuff. you like to pop and lock yeah, that's what you're doing especially the old <laughs> yeah the robot so 
it's just so different. I love it. And I do like the electronic music. <coughs> it features heavily in this. I've got a fondness for that. So so it kind of fits in my thing uh, to a certain extent. Um, but we'll talk about that more as we go through the movies. But finally, last and very much not least, uh, my regular buddy and pal, Joe. How are you, mate? I'm doing fantastic. I came to get educated. I've never seen these movies. I, I saw bits and pieces when they were on television. And when it comes to, uh, you know, this kind of music and, and this kind of dance, I'm kind of like Sonny Crockett in the opening scene of Miami Vice. Hey, Gumby, you want to turn it down a couple of decibels? <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I'd, I'd love to check it out, man. I know the chick's hot. That I see Well, there's a few the nice. Yeah. And the hospital dance in the second movie has got to be one of the best. Okay. Kind of we'll we'll check talk about that. that. And we'll show some clips. We're going to try and show some clips, obviously, YouTube. If we get shut down, don't go away. It'll come back again. And on Rumble, of course, there will be no such problems. And that will remain right. the definitive version of the show going forward but let's and i already checked you're up on both of them so you're good cool uh yeah i got a couple of screens going here and there i did want to talk about your jersey though your your shirt before we go on um oh, sure uh was that say they say diddly 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 potatoes it might as well i mean when you talk <laughs> celtics you're talking irishman from boston so that's you know from boston that's it boston where well, they boston. pass the cas in the ad yeah and Imp they don't pronounce the ass they do yeah. it tell us your irish joke so what are the Irish good for? Bear in mind, this has certain context and people may not get it, but that's fine. <laughs> they make for very good sword warmers. <laughs> and bear in mind, this is coming from a guy who did Viking reenactment and the buddy of mine who said this was right in front of a Celtic encampment when he said this. Uh, of course. You know, you've got to love a joke that requires mid-joke explanation. <laughs> <sighs> but I do love that joke. I, I, it's, they're, 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 yes, they're sword warmers and blood donors. Yes. yes. Uh, Shadowversary would love that joke. He'd get it in two seconds. I think he would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so going back, uh, just to say hello to everyone in the chat. By the way, the channel has reached on YouTube fourteen. We're over fourteen hundred subs now. All right. On YouTube, we're up to almost fourteen ten, which is just fabulous. Thank you, everybody, for your continued support. And uh, I've no idea why, but thank you. Uh, and also on Rumble, we've reached over 200 subs now. And hell, I even got a monthly subscriber on Rumble, which I, I didn't even know they did. Oh, yeah. They so do. Jake Hudson is a, my first ever monthly sub. I call looking, his name out every time. You, you sorry, are. Yeah. I am looking at, I'd set myself a target on YouTube and said, I'm not going to do memberships till I get to 1,500 subs because I felt otherwise I would just kind of be cheating it a bit. But Anyway, I'm looking at, at looking at such a thing and what would that mean and talking to others that have done it and, and how would you go about that. But but Jake, thank you for your support over in Rumble. Appreciate that very much. But thank you, everyone, for being here as normal. Uh, we have the great Lord Thoth. Thoth, 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 Thoth is here. Uh, also another hockey fan. That's two hockey fans in a row. FKHC2005. Good to see you, buddy. Um we also have the great David Glenn. Thanks for being here, David. Appreciate it very much. Uh, our girl also, and yeah, another hockey fan. Your although sharks is that hockey? Hard to see. Your Muslim uncle. Go for it, buddy. Get my iced tea in for us. Good to see you. The great Christian Delorme from Vinyl Revival. Hey, buddy. Thanks for being here. As we say, Das Wolfen can't make it in, but he's listening in. Thanks, John. Uh, Parrothead is. Um, Talking about someone, I don't know who. I don't know who he's talking about. You know, it's like leading lambs to the slaughter. Uh, Darius, get your ass on here. What's breaking, <laughs> big bacon? <laughs> big bacon, it sounds like Tyson Foods. Oh, um, God, don't go there. Hail to Drew Levers. Levers, Drew Levers. Hail chat in the club. Yes, all hail the Canon Film Club. Eh, Crimlon, good to see you, buddy. Uh, Streamlabs. Well, hello, Streamlabs. Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I set these things off and they just seem to keep going. Courtney will be here eventually. That's why I'm stalling for time. We're just going to do nothing for the next hour until Courtney gets here. Right. Uh, but can't wait till she does. Uh, if I miss anyone, forgive me. But thank you all for being here. We will catch up with the chats 
as we go and including over in Rumble. We are also live on uh, the Twixters uh, somewhere. I'll monitor uh, Rumble for you. I just popped out the chat there. Yeah. So. Cool. Thank you, mate. Yep. Uh, so let's talk about these uh, movies. Let's show some, some beer essentials first. Uh, some stats. So Breaking. Do you like the font? Great font, eh? Breaking. Released May 1984. On a budget of one point two million million dollars, which yeah, it's not a lot, even by eighty-four budget no. standards, it's oh. not a lot of money. No, it's not. But it proved to be a huge mm-hmm. hit for Canon, like unexpectedly, because they did manage to capture the market. I think they beat a rival studio's movie Break Street, I think it was, by about a month, even though that one was in the can already. Like Golan and Globus urged them to get this thing done. In record time, 21 day shooting schedule, I think. Hmm. Big hit for them, made box office domestic of 38.7 million. But beyond that, the cultural impact was huge and it caused a lot of excitement. So, uh, they for once kind of um, nailed the zeitgeist, as we say. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, did a pretty if the movies themselves are, are kind of standard musicals. The dancing and music was so novel that it made a big difference. And they Mm -hmm. captured the real stuff there. Uh, Breaking 2, of course, Electric Boogaloo. (laughs) Released December 84, only seven months after the first movie. They both came out the same year? Yes, they did. That was my first year in the Army. No wonder I didn't see these movies. Yeah, Chad, that's that's right. Same year, buddy. Mm Mm-hmm. You know that stuff too. So um, budget three million. So bigger budget, box office half of the first one roughly fifteen million. Still a big hit though. Still made money. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the title, of course, has entered popular culture. Yes. In an unexpected way. I think <laughs> the only one I've heard more jokes about is Crush Groove. That, Crush that, Groove. That. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a great act. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Chad, you've uh, you pointed out that these were very close together. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it, leave it to the go-go boys to see all that money and immediately say we want more money. Let's <laughs> if we can do the sh- first one in twenty-one days, we can definitely have another one out this year. So. Yeah, that's right. They they, they kind of pushed that one hard, didn't they? Yes, <laughs> yeah. there was. Uh, uh, it's so hard they couldn't even get the, the original director back and they had to go with a uh, Sam Furstenberg. But uh, we'll come to that. So Christian, our great friend Christian, has super chatted a five dollar Canadian. It's a hippo character with stars growing in his eyes, pumping his arms in the air with the word hype pulsating above him. I think I described that perfectly. Just from memory, I described that. Right. Uh, thank you, Christian. Uh, you're going to have to get something for that. You're the loser, punk. Tough as nails. Gotta have paint cans in them movies, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, let's call up some images as we start to talk more about these movies and look at some of the people involved. Can, there. can we talk about how awesome Shabadoo's wardrobe is in both movies, though? It is just oh, utterly yeah. fantastic. His look is just perfect <laughs> it is and the, it was all his own stuff yeah that's why it was perfect <laughs> yeah he wore his him he and boogaloo show wore their own shit in these movies and it was awesome i don't think it's quite as awesome as ice t in the second movie with the dominate the leather domination gear <laughs> the bondage gear that was possibly slightly more <laughs> your muslim uncle i think uh, the, my mention of the san san jose sharks has prompted a response and um, I do like being called brain because I am smart. So that's, <laughs> um, so. I guess I should also point out that Shabadoo is the lead, the male lead. So <laughs> since yeah. some people may not know. Yes. Yeah, the pimp yeah. hat gives it away, man. And we're yeah. we're, we're, we're going to get this. So a lot of posters for these breaking. Um, known in, other, in some markets uh, as Breakdance, the movie. Uh, and even in others, and I think there was somewhere it was called Break, Break, Break in '84 or Break Street '84 or some. There's uh, some weird 
uh, variation depending on the market, you know. Mm. You know so they're breaking to electric boogaloo. I don't think they came, the term electric boogaloo was already in existence as a dance. Mm -hmm. They just tagged it to this and then it became the name for a generic sequel of any kind to anything. Yep. Um, breaking to electric boogaloo. I like this poster. Yeah, that's it's badass. A, that's a badass poster. It is. Yeah, Lucinda Dickey. Whoever did the artwork did a good job on that one. Yeah, she's well drawn in this one. <laughs> Hell yeah, she is. Uh, yeah, breakdance the movie in some places, uh, which causes multiple confusions. Uh, El Explosivo Valle de los 80. Damn, dude. Even though it was out in 84. So. You did a good job on that. Yeah. Um, Gossman, you speak pretty good Spanish. <sighs> well, you know. Well, Spain's not that far from Scotland, really. It's just a short, short plane ride. I've uh, noticed that the consistent theme in all the posters seems to be Lucinda Dickey's butt. Yeah, <laughs> her butt. Yes, of course. <laughs> so, her butt is pretty course. good in these ones, I have to say. But this is the uh, French, I think. Hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, Break Street 84. Plus, oh, Christian can read this. Plus qu'un comédie musicale, une révolution qui vient d'Amérique. Can't do that. That's not, not as good. But yeah, it's, it's nice ass. And then obviously, as you see, some of the outfits, you were talking outfits. Uh, that one's just, you can you can play chess, obviously, with that one. <laughs> uh, and here we have, now let's get to the, the, the let's cut to the chase. <laughs> Your favorite we, part of this we whole all thing. Know who the real star of this movie is. The guy in the onesie center stage there. Yeah. In the onesie. <laughs> John Claude Van Damme is the star and mastermind of this movie. Um, it should be noted, by the way, that his his great friend and kickboxer and Lionheart co-star Michael Kesey is also somewhere in the spectators in these scenes. I think he's walking past, or I don't think he's in dancing. Um, but yeah, obviously he is the star of the movie. Um, This is the first Dennis speech scene where Kelly's introduced to the guys. And John Flat is boogie and hard. Oh, hey. Hey, man. Who's that girl in the pink bikini? Yeah, we need to know. The fire in mine is lots to know. The warning to you. As I say, if we get cut off on YouTube, oh, no. wait around, we'll come back. Come on, it'll be fun. Not here. Oh. Oh. There's two uh, interesting people in that. Yeah, Kelly's introduction to the uh, to the boys. Uh, Damn boys. Damn boys. Ozone. And uh, turbo. So, uh, but yeah, we'll, you, we'll... you know, and the movie set up a lot of the the dance movie tropes later too about um, privileged white girl going out getting tall how to dance by the real street guys. And it did, <laughs> especially the second movie. They really leaned hard on that, which is why the second movie is a lot less street and a bit more like a normal musical. It's like a flash dance or a West Side Story with just better dancing, I think. But um, so uh, let's look at, so listen to Dickie. Um, as I think you mentioned, Chad, before that we came on the air, or was it when we were on the air? That she was a, quite a busy girl for Canon. Three movies in this year, done. Yeah. Two break-ins and one ninja. So. Yeah, and I think the ninja was filmed first, but these two were rushed out so fast. It ended up being released between the two. Uh, yep. So you see her in this, and then you see her as a possessed telephone repair woman possessed by aerobic. A, a, you left out the aerobic instructor, aerobic part instructor too. right? <laughs> uh, possessed by a demon ninja, yes, and killing machine. So yeah, if you ever wanted a regular canon action movie plus The Exorcist plus Flashdance, Ninja Three: The Domination is. Your all of the above answer. That's right. Yeah, it is all of the above. Ticks all the boxes. Um, hail Tree Goblin HD and hail Anima. 
Good to see you. Uh, but yeah, Lucinda Dickey, and she is a dancer. She was a dancer. Mm -hmm. So uh, it wasn't like she was faking that, but she it wasn't this kind of dancer. So she had a pretty fast learning curve with um, the main guys as well. well. We'll come to them in a minute. They're teaching her a lot of this stuff. She uh, must have. Uh, she must have been dating somebody that was high up in Gold, Golden Globus too, because I, I mean, know. it was like they were trying to make her a star. She was in half the stuff they made, you know. She, she was in probably the, worked just, cheap. I think she just did the. <laughs> there three. you go. I, I thought she only did the three. I thought she was done she, after breaking two. She did the three cannons, but I think she mm -hmm. did Grease two before this, and I think maybe she worked with the director. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so that might have been it. I don't know. Hmm. Um, here she is. Um, Needing it, she needs glasses. In this one. <laughs> um, look at the size of that sword. Um, and then she was in uh, cheerleader camp, which is is a awesome piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> she was she wasn't faking the funk, Darius. Uh, well, she no. was kind of faking it. She did. She could dance. She was a, a trained dancer, just not that kind of music. But so she did her damn best. But she had been in. She was a dance major, cheerleader. She was a dancer in Greece too, and she was in the show Solid Gold, which I think um, Michael Chambers Turbo was in as well. I, or was it? It could have been uh, Shabadoo was in Solid Gold uh, and Soul Train stuff like that. So these guys, the Solid Gold dancers. Yeah. yeah. So there was a few connections between all of them. Um, I don't know who that other actress is, but yeah. anyway. So the two male stars of both movies, so Shabadoo, real name Adolfo. Kinonis, I can't I see how this over my pronunciation is going to let me down. He's in both movies as Ozone, Orlando Barker Ozone. Uh, also was in Lambada, which is a canon, as a different character. The Forbidden he, Dance, yeah. Yes, the Forbidden Dance. So how could they make a movie about it? It's forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> that was another one where there was competing Lambada movies, as crazy as that sounds. Yeah, yeah. I can kind of remember that. Canon had to get in there. <laughs> Uh, this was actually, um, he actually choreographed a lot of this movie. I mean, this guy was no, he was a genuine star of this scene, uh, particularly the West Coast scene, uh, and had been in a lot of TV, Saturday Night Live, Soul Train, uh, and he was just a phenomenal artist and, and sadly passed away uh, in, two th in 2020, 65. So RIP, Adolfo. Um Wonderful dancer, choreographed Lambada as well. So he wasn't just a performer. He knew his stuff behind the scenes too. And he was a brilliant choice to be honest. I think he was brought on as a choreographer to start with and then said, no, they said, no, you got to star in this. You know. To answer um, your question a second ago, the uh, other girl next to Lucinda was uh, Betsy Russell. She is a veteran of the Saw franchise. She plays Jill in it okay. in like three, four, well, and five. I could see someone sawing her in two. That would be an interesting <laughs> experience. <laughs> yeah, she apparently was the lead in Cheerleader Camp. Yeah. Uh, yes, interesting movie. I may have seen it before. It's maybe back in the 80s on VHS. <laughs> so, yeah, here's um, Adolfo here in full flow. Uh, top man. But so sadly missed, as he was a, he was a real originator of this style. Um and yeah, brought his own wardrobe, which was, which was awesome. Uh, so yeah, that's a pretty, that's Lambada, of course. It's in Lambada. Not uh, well, it's a kind of movie we may cover it one day. I'm not sure. <laughs> However, his co-star was um, uh, Boogaloo Shrimp, probably because he's pretty short. Real name Michael Chambers, and he's thankfully still with us. Playing, he played Turbo, Tony Turbo Ainley. He he taught. This is no word of a lie. He taught Michael Jackson the moonwalk. Really? Yes. Wow. He he had been inspired by Saturday Night Fever, and then he got into the new wave stuff. He loved Ray. He loved the stop motion Harry Ray Harryhausen movies. Mm -hmm. So he developed a lot of this style, and he was he was seen by Michael Jackson on a news program. I think there's also been a documentary. Out uh, and Michael Jackson called him and a friend to the mansion and said, 
teach me how to do this stuff. And then he did it. He did it himself in the Motown 25 special. So this is the guy that taught him that. Hmm. And then he later on did do some Michael Jackson, other work with Michael Jackson, uh, which he got credited for various things. And he'd been, he'd been with Shabadoo. He'd been in a lot of videos. He'd been in a feel for you with Chaka Khan, Lionel mm -hmm. Richie's all night long. But these guys were real stars of the scene, you know, uh, there he is yep. uh, in a documentary about him, which you can see. Um, and it's colorful. These movies are colorful. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. Very bright, colorful street style. Great. He's famous, of course, I think from everyone, a lot of people's favorite scene of all both movies, the sweep <coughs> street sweeping dance. Mm -hmm. It's just, just phenomenal, especially as the music is craft work, which I love. Um, Tour de France. So uh, Ice T, of course, is in both of these, and he was in the later rapping. I think uh, plays the rap talker in both movies. Um, it's not a huge part, but it was his first first big break. I think you got to start. It, you got to start somewhere, man. I yeah, mean, and he's done for, since. Yep. The the the, uh, it, the album soundtrack album for Breaking gave him his first album. Uh, song so um, mm -hmm. it's a shame Ice T looks so different there that people wouldn't be able to recognize him. Yeah, <laughs> no, I do I'm like the, he looks yeah, exactly no. the same. It's, like, it's crazy. I, I got news the, for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I think that I think the look on the right is the best one. But um, yeah, right. Um, he did say he thinks he's. I think that costuming got used in Cyborg again later. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, with complete with Ice T sweat on it. Um, Courtney, we'll see you soon. Great to uh, thanks for the one dollar. You don't have to do that last one dollar ninety nine. Uh, super chat from Courtney, hurrying back to join you. M much love, chat. Well, much love to you, Courtney. Uh, it means we got to figure. I, I don't. What will we play this time? Um, well, we'll play the non the non audio version. I mean, he cuts that just so Jean-Claude is center stage every time in the background. Yeah. Every time. Exactly. Can't, your eyes are drawn to him. <laughs> <laughs> Christa, so uh, some of the other stars, we're not going to cover everybody that's in them because it's fairly big. Christopher McDonald, of course, is in the first movie, Breaking. Yep. He's Kelly's friend and agent, James Wilcox. I don't know if we've ever seen him in anything else, have we? Oh shoot! He's been <laughs> He's, in a few things, buddy. Hang on a second. He yeah. is Shooter. popular and prolific. Just a actor. little bit popular and prolific. Prolific actor. He's been in hundreds of things, but we'll all forever remember him as the man who ate pieces of shit for breakfast. As Shooter McGavin in the great one of the greatest hockey movies ever made, Happy Gilmore. Got to play it where it lies. That's how That's it goes. Right. Gotta play where it lies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he is, and he turns out to be a fairly sympathetic character in the end, as Kelly's friend and agent. Um, uh, you got people like Chris the Glove Taylor, like uh, a DJ and record producer, was in at the start of a lot of the hip hop stuff as well. Uh, he's only he's in Breaking. Uh, he's the DJ in the Radiotron Club, and I do love these scenes, and it's. Well, it's a little grittier than the second one, I think, in that respect, uh, the club scenes. And he does play a big part in the soundtrack, too. Um, uh, yeah, Reckless is the rap that uh, was on the first soundtrack album in the first movie that Ice-T gave him his first album performance. He'd done a few singles here and there, 12-inch club singles. Um, there's also a lot of other great dancers. We'll never cover them all with all the scenes, but there's the electro rock crew in the first movie, I think they're in the second movie too. I might be wrong. Uh, these were also guys that were big on the West Coast scene. So Bruno Falcon, uh, Timothy Solomon, and Anna Sanchez. And I love this this battle scene and the whole ethos of Breaking and Breaking Two, where these guys they're in combat, but it's dance. Yes, you know. And mm -hmm. the thing about these two movies is you see this stuff replicated. I wasn't saying they're the first to do it in music videos because they weren't. But you see that stuff replicated so often after that in oh, Michael yeah. Jackson, Janet Jackson, all these other acts. The videos looked very much like these movies. 
Well, that that kind of dance fight scene goes all the way back to the West Side Story original, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, the, that oh. dance face off as opposed to physical mm -hmm. violence. It's done right. through the dancing, and it's it's mm -hmm. quite effective. Um, Susie Bono, she was married to Sonny Bono around about this time. Susie Cohelo, Cohelo, breaking two only. She plays Rhonda, who does not like Kelly, and makes it plain that she doesn't like her. But she comes around in the end because she doesn't like her because she's a rich whatever. And I think she's got plans on ozone as well. Bizarrely, she was in a movie I've never seen an American international pictures movie called The Norseman with Lee Majors was the star. So really. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen this. I think it's probably American International's Roger Corman. But... Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh also star uh, another star breaking to you was Harry Caesar, R and B singer and then turned actor from uh, uh it was known as Little Caesar. He plays Byron, who's basically the mentor of the Miracles Community Theater Club. Uh he was in lots of movies too, including obviously The Longest Yard. Oh yeah. With Bert. So, uh, you know, not exactly. Was, uh, was Breaking Two the first time they were like trying to save the community center too? Like that, yeah. that, that whole thing. I feel like it started with Breaking Two. Well, I think, don't know. You might be th right. Because I think Jimmy Cagney, not Jimmy Cagney, um, what's the little guy that used to do musicals? Um, can't remember. It'll come back to me. It used to Think be. Let's do no, little or not even. Uh, it was in the movies with Elizabeth Taylor, like the National Velvet. Can't remember oh, 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 uh, Mickey Rooney. Yeah, so they used oh, to do the, yeah. hey, guys, let's do the show right here. <laughs> yeah. You know, trope, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, let's save, let's all get together to save this pillar of the community building from the nasty developer. The evil corporation. So Katie Bears <laughs> taunting me. I'm never going to watch any of your sports streams again. You don't even know the difference between golf and hockey. You called Happy Gilmore a hockey movie. He's playing hockey at the beginning. That's the whole point because he's crap at it. He breaks the glass in the arena. And he's Look, if it's, if it's a multi-sport movie, he will always lean towards hockey it's a, every it, time. It's kind yep. of a, that's kind of the joke. He's a hockey player who can't play very well. <laughs> becomes, yeah. Anyway. But Katie, I'm glad you're here. Don't 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 depart. Uh, also, we had um, Peter McLean plays the generic um, evil white developer in Breaking Two. Uh, Mr. Douglas, veteran actor, was on a ton of TV in that era. Um, I'm not sure he wore that hat in this movie, but um, and then we have Sabrina Garcia as Lucia. Uh, who was turns out to be Turbo's love interest in the second thing? Oh, she looks twelve. She does oh look God. twelve. <laughs> Not sure she did too many other movies. I think she moved into maybe moved into production. But uh, and then uh, Steve Sugarfoot Natorio, who played Strobe and had a real life animosity with Shabadoo, but he really? brought him in because he felt that would work well in this combat scene because the two really didn't like each other. They were rivals. But it was fair play to, to um, Shabadoo for bringing him in, you know? Mm hmm Yeah. First movie is directed by Joel Silberg, uh, who also did Lambada and Rappin. I think the second one was produced so quickly that they had to get another director because he was busy. Uh, and they ended up with... Canon veteran Sam Furstenberg, who had obviously worked with Lucinda Dickey on Ninja Three. Oh, there's the action figures. I love those. Uh, and then That's he did, cool. and he directed like Revenge of the Ninja, American Ninja, American Ninja Two, Vending Force, blah blah blah. He had no experience with musicals, Furstenberg. So he said, "Well, direct it like an action movie," and that's what he did. And that's, <laughs> but I love those figures. Yeah, it apparently cool. worked. Made yeah. money. And then we had things like this in the uh, second movie. So they, they did um, they did some neat stuff in the second one with uh, the nurses, the hospital thing. <laughs> we'll come out. We're going to show some stills. So the we'll, second so we'll... one was the dancing on the ceiling, right? Yes. So we're yep. going to come. We, yeah, we'll show we'll show some of those clips. Uh, we'll go through both mo both movies and kind of uh, talk about some of the uh, the stuff that goes on in them. Uh, so just let me set up 
some slides for the first uh, movie I'll produce. Somebody playing music in the background? I'm not. Uh, here we go. All right. So let's let's go through the first movie briefly. This will be a lot shorter than our normal because we're doing two movies in one. So, yeah, and breaking the, the plot, roughly speaking, is, uh, and it is roughly, Kelly, played by Lucinda Dickey, is a struggling jazz dancer. Jazz dancer? No wonder yes. she's struggling. And wow. Jazz, that jazz dancing thing. Now, I've watched a number of seasons of So You Think You Can Dance. Not voluntarily, I have to say. No, no, no. And, it's the uh, wife, right? That's yeah. what it is with me. And yeah. The mm -hmm. least good bits to me were the modern jazz dancing bits. Yeah. With the whatever. I'd this rather watch interpretive good. dance, really. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This stuff was good. But anyway, Kelly is a struggling jazz dancer. Like many, most of them are. In yeah. a sense. <laughs> nobody makes much money in that business and she uh she's working work she moves to la she wants to pursue pursue her career as a professional dancer and she's working in the the fast food place um as you do of course because that's, that's what when most that's most dancers do, yeah. most actors and actors and dancers in hollywood that's the real job Bartenders, waitresses. <laughs> Our good buddy Matt is a bartender, and he's trying to get into acting. Yeah. So she's. That's. Yeah. I mean, these are racing through fairly quickly, but the, mm -hmm. like uh, Ben uh, Ben Loki, I think his name is, plays her instructor. Now he's the villain of the piece in this movie because he hates hip hop and breakdown stuff. He's lusting on Kelly, but she doesn't want it. Uh, and he basically tries to stop the the crew from getting involved in anything that he's connected to. Right. Uh, so, you know, a fairly standard setup. This is our friend Adam, and he's he takes her down to Venice Beach and introduces her to the scene there, and he knows Ozone and Turbo. And so you get the first kind of uh, view of them doing stuff, and that, that was something that went on. I mean... I've seen a few documentaries about it. That scene was big. They were doing this stuff down there, uh, mm -hmm. making up as they went along, basically, and inventing their own moves, building and old stuff. Uh, so it does pretty quickly introduce you to that. And uh, I think I may even have a second. Uh... So we oh. showed scene one earlier with uh, with Jean Claude. We're going to have a quick peek at yeah, uh, with scene. his Andre the Giant unitard. That's right, guy. the unitard man, the onesie. Locks, rock crew challenge them for the first time like your yeah. dancing's not good look at this we're the guys you know you know in between shake uh, takes jean claude was going to the director was like do you need somebody to do the splits because i can do this because <laughs> i can do the splits <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah that's right yeah <laughs> so um but anyway, yeah, so a lot of good, you inter you're introduced to the main characters, you're introduced to, ooh, pink bikini is a good one, you're introduced to the main uh, rivals, Electro Rock, and Kelly meets the guys, and she starts, she says, I'll give this a go, you know, I'll show you my jazz moves, and obviously, Jean-Claude's very excited about that. Yes. Jean-Claude Jean gets very excited about that, and these guys are like, you guys aren't good. So it sets up the whole battle thing, which recurs throughout the movie between the two rival groups. Um, that black singlet line art. <laughs> Indeed. Katie Beer still still upset me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to upset you, buddy. Wow. It was a joke. It was a joke. Going really hardcore. I mean, he wears a Bruins jersey through most of the movie. That's right. Yeah, he it it does. So... Uh, but anyway, yeah, he's he's running. So so our our bad guy there is running the. Um, he's going to be running this or uh, competition for dancers, somewhere in town. And at this point, this crew, there's no sense that this crew are going to be involved in that kind of thing because they're street guys, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, here they are, kind of getting introduced to the uh, jazz troupe and. Pissing off um, 
the uh, the dance teacher uh, clearly with a villainous look about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why he thinks she can go up against these guys. Cause right? <laughs> You're half their size, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they're not interested in professional dancing at the moment. They're more interested in having the dance-offs at the Radio Tron Club and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is where he gives us some private tuition to Kelly. Uh, not that uh, she's not interested in the part of that private tuition. He creeps on her, but he is giving us some valuable info here in terms of a dancer, in terms of of strength, and uh, you know, believing in what you do. So that mm -hmm. message is okay. But he's he's basically a bit of a creep. So, mm -hmm. well, he's portrayed that, portrayed that way anyway. Uh, I guess she's showing off here, Lucinda Dickey's showing off her real chops, as it were. Uh-oh. Yeah. And there's what she didn't want. Yeah, so that's the toxic part there. Got to um, ask first, man. What, what, what's your problem? You know, very toxic. Uh, what's your problem, bro? This now comes to this magnificent part of the movie. Obviously, the turbo's working down in the 7-Eleven. I think if somebody mentions Fred Astaire, so it wasn't mentioned Fred Astaire. He goes, "Who?" <laughs> then he goes out and does this dance, and I do love this because the one thing about that scene was it wasn't just like funk and soul stuff that was changed up. They brought in all this electronic stuff for the beats, and mm -hmm. the electro pop side of it became big. And this used the wonderful Kraftwerk <coughs> and Tour de France. Uh, for that scene and you know once again obviously we're, we're going to get the old copyright warnings but screw it this scene is so good we gotta show it Yeah, and I do love craft work, so this was it was great for me to hear this stuff in in this style, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm not particularly a huge fan of, of a lot of dance music, but I love the electro stuff, you know. Yeah. Oh, I like dance music. I was uh, I was a nightclub bar for well, 18 years. I old was, school dance music. I mean, funk and soul stuff, but not so much the uh, what became house and all those styles, you know. I kind of dig a little bit of it all. Pretty eclectic when it comes to dance music. Yeah, but I, the use the use of uh, cry for it was awesome. Yep, and, and there's a few electro stuff in here, and, and that, I mean that was that whole music scene deserves its own discussion because mm -hmm. you had these guys like electro guys like Africa Bambata and others mixing all this stuff in and sampling old stuff uh, like instrumentals like Apache and whatever, mixing it all in there. It's just so creative. Mm -hmm. uh, but the dancing then evolved to go along with it, which is good. So anyway, so there's going to be a few dance battles and whatever. I think, uh, yeah, down at this point, you hear a little bit of the Art of Noise beatbox, which was a huge uh, electronic instrumental with the Art of Noise being a, a mainly British uh, producers, bunch of producers. A lot of their stuff got used in movies and beatbox was their first song and it ended up a little bit in here. I think they're listening to it in the background in the street because it's not on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was a famous uh, track in that world. Uh, out in the street. And they've got the place well decorated too. Yeah, I mean, th that big popping tag back there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they that, gotta again, have spray cans, man. Gotta have that brings cans. in the other part of the whole culture. Right. This, and that's this, art, dude. Uh, if, you've, if you've ever seen, uh, we've got a lot of train tracks in, in this town, and uh, some of these, uh, the, you see some really cool artwork on the side of these uh, rail cars that sit, you know, yeah. that they're really talented, man. If they had the right, you know, means they could really go somewhere with it. Uh, yeah. I mean, the ones that are great are great. And there's mm -hmm. some fantastic work done in it. It's just to me, it's more valid than a lot of modern art, which is, yep. just, as we know, is a lot of rubbish, a lot of it. Oh, yeah. But James is trying to get her, her agent who, at first I thought, well, they're maybe going to make him a little creepy, but he isn't. He really does do her a, a solid. He tries to help her as much as he can. He might be the, like, the most honorable agent in a movie that they've that's ever been in a movie, where all he's trying to do is actually 
get the people work. He doesn't put skeevy moves on the girl. It's yeah. it's weird because uh, you know when the first time you see it, you just ex- especially because no, I mean it's not his fault, but he's kind of got a look where you expect it. That's why he was Shooter McGavin. So that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, he's, right. This this guy usually plays a bad guy, but you know. He was Matthew McConaughey in Tropic Thunder before Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're right. He's he's not. You're expecting this guy to be the I don't hate I hate all that stuff and be creepy. Mm-hmm. He's not. He's very supportive. He fights for them. Fights for her. It's the Ben Loki dance instructor. That's but I guess one. um they might have worked together. On, I mean, he was in Greece too as one of the leads. Yeah, he so, was, and and he, that's why he was so pleased. Lucinda Dickey was in this because yeah, they, they, that's what know, I was going to say. You probably newer so that not was that many, not that i remember much about grease too i mean is Greece it me too. or does this you... guy look like he could be related to joe pesci i mean is it... he could be but i was going to comment on his hair yeah <laughs> he's got that soul glow thing going on <laughs> <laughs> the curly locks and the i don't think chris i, I mean, wonder what christopher Greece, mcdonald Greece has got some funny songs man don't don't sleep on grease too i mean and, and and a song called do it for your country is it's always yeah. right the whole the oh, whole I, masked guy on the motorcycle is pretty cool it's not bad it, it's right? just the first one's so good that it tends look to it's get, got michelle yeah. pfeiffer okay so, i think that's where the art yeah. and noise are playing but now we get to one of another one of those key scenes which is the dance the dance off they're the against it's the tko crew against the electro rock crew uh it's key a key scene uh where you get all of their skills in there, and there's obviously the the macho bit that you see in these dance movies. You know, they're giving it. That's bit. true. You got to see who's going to get served. Yeah, right. That's the one, and she's uh, on the sidelines, but wants to get involved. She's starting to learn some moves. Mm-hmm. I love this stuff, and I think it was quite gritty because the second movie had much more big dance scenes out in the open. This one was much more street, uh, street and club. Yeah, the club mm-hmm. scene and and. Yeah, the, the out, there's you talked about the outfits, Chad. I mean, it's uh, this was all his own stuff. I feel like it can't, you know, I don't know. You can, you know, what is it? Uh, the when it was uh, Steve Buscemi in, you know, in the one movie where he's like, Hello, fellow children. <laughs> you, know, like, right. you can tell a lot of times when Hollywood is just getting it wrong, where they're 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 doing what they think is the scene, you know, is the hip current thing, right. But uh, Canon, by way of being on such a tight schedule and such a low budget, they just hired the guys from the streets and just said, "Come in here and do this, and mm-hmm. and wear your own clothes, do your own thing. We're not, we don't have anything, you know, like that." And it comes it off so genius. good because mm-hmm. it's it's it just oozes authenticity. It's yeah, which is well, why I luck. think the second movie actually loses a little bit because it was a little bit more produced. It's much more of a standard mu- a musical. Yeah, this, so you this lose one, they, some of that feel. They just got lucky, or or in a sense, they were just they, 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 whatever it was. They said we need you, 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 and you, and these were the real guys to get, and they were they were right. To- so well done, Canon, you know, because they could have just faked it. They didn't, and they let these guys do what they wanted in the scene, these scenes. Yeah, I love this stuff. I absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. They're talented as all get out, man. Oh, Without yeah. Doubt about it. Yeah. But I love the, the yeah, there's the electro bit. Just... Calm down, buddy. Nice tea up there on the stage. Doing the voiceover. Who's going to win? <laughs> Who's going to Yeah, there's a lot of that in the rap. Amping stuff. it up. Well, it's all what the songs are. This is what happens in this movie. <laughs> right. I mean, you can, um, to do a, a more recent one that kind of comes off when uh, Eminem and they did Eight Mile. And that's I guess, what I was yeah. thinking of earlier, too. Yeah. yeah. He, um, mm-hmm. you know, obviously he lived the, you know, lived that. So they, he made sure that when they were doing the movie, it felt Authentic. like that scene would yeah. be mm-hmm. and so you if that kind of stuff comes off so much better when you're i obviously i'm not a break dancer but when i watch this it feels like okay these guys are really doing it this is the real like it just it just you can almost get that sixth sense of authenticity like these guys aren't probably aren't being overly choreographed they're coming mm-hmm. up with this routine on their own 
and it just it, it's great and yeah, it's. It, I guess the there was a, a choreographer on the movies, but really they gave it to Chabadu and the guys and said, "Well, it's your stuff. We've got mm-hmm. this amount of time. We're going to set it here. What would you guys do?" Right. And they came up with it all themselves because they were very experienced, but they were the real guys. It's that it does give it an authenticity that otherwise it, it probably wouldn't have if it was just mm-hmm. an exploitation movie, you know? Right. Uh, I do have a little bit more, I think, of um, uh, our good friend Ice-T, who hasn't joined us on the show yet. Damn it. So, damn it. Damn it, son. Uh, God damn it, he's not here yet. Well, I got news for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got news for you. I ain't coming. If you think he's, if you think he's coming, that means you... No, I'm just... See, Joe, <laughs> you've got friends, that you've got relationships with women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh oh, look out. out! Now, one, two, three, four, get up, everybody, get on the floor. Cut the turbo, we'll rock the night. We're gonna rock the heart, gonna rock the right. We're gonna move y'all in, gonna move you out. Teach Here we go. It's all about. You don't jam, you know, you don't jam. This is so nimble. So, rock, rock, rock. Well, his legs are made of rubber, man. I envy these guys the skill, you know. Not often I envy people for anything. I very much envy having that skill that they've got. It just amazes me what they can do with their uh, with their bo- their uh, their bodies. There, they're just like, how do you do that? You know, right? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. There's, there's it's some spontaneous. Other things are worked out, and you see them working on it in the in the various parts of the movie. Working on the moves. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the first dance battle at the Radiotron. I do like the Radiotron for the name of the club. It's pretty damn good. Um, but yeah, Ice T in a, in a much more reasonable outfit than in the second one. Right. Uh, yeah. So why do I get the feeling she's wearing that backwards? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gotta love that little Magic Johnson child jersey that he's wearing. Right. <laughs> <That's> right <yeah. laughs> but like, just to make it I, as tight as possible. Right? I, and yeah, the beat- I, I, what size is that? 2T? That's right. <laughs> I love the boom box as well. Everything about this is just right, you know? The boom, yeah. the beat, the boom box is right. Boom we boxes even- were big things back then. Yeah. yeah. Big time. We used to take a boom box out with us to the uh, disc golf course all the time. And uh, we'd be blaring mm. Boston on it, you know, having a good time, man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Before Ice-T went gangster, cop deleting and almost heavy metal. I'm right. Pretty, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just going to throw down and guess that uh, Shrimpy and Shabadoo weren't blaring Boston on their boom boxes. Uh, cool. probably no, not. they weren't. No, no, no. no. This, is an interest, imagine this, that. this is an interesting scene because they get these, somehow they promote, get these, guys in this bar fighting each other um you know rather than them fighting ozone and turbo they say if i start fighting each other but i do love the adverts for the gigs in this bar and i have to say i hate to say it i would go to these gigs jerry reed hoyt exton it's jerry reed yeah (laughs) the coasters you know um is john stewart if you remember john stewart he was a pal of 70s Fleetwood Mac friend of and did some stuff there. Gold, I think, was a big hit. But yeah, it's a, it's neat. It's the weirdest scene because you're thinking these guys are going to be ganging up on our heroes, but they're not. They start fighting each other. <laughs> so I guess they avoided some of the, the more um, uh, toxic uh, situations that could have happened. I mean, there is a few. It's a very wholesome movie. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some, and it's very diverse. But I mean, today's not by today's today's terms where they shove everything in there. No, like, by quota. It's natural. Every, yeah, yeah, it's natural, and everyone's working together. There's the odd villain or two, but everyone's working together. There's none of that friction. It's all about working together. And even the guys are fighting. It's a dance fight. Mm-hmm. So it's got real natural diversity, which which we all love. We love that stuff. You know, yeah, just don't just don't hammer us with it. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's an example, and this is '84, and they were doing it right. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. In my opinion, it uh, it's a very good-hearted movies. The two of them, 
uh, very upbeat, great message, uh, and with some fantastic skills. Uh, poor Christopher McDonald's a fish out of water most of the time. Yeah, right. This is not his <laughs> scene at all. Yeah, but he he actually tries, and he he's fit, intrigued. Yeah, he's, he's intrigued, intrigued, no doubt. But that's this is not his deal. Yeah, he even tries to go at the dancing himself. But yeah. So uh, I do like uh, the fact that Christopher McDonald's character, James, wants to help these guys and take them on. Now, Ozone's got a bit of, he doesn't really want anybody's help. No. He's like, we don't need anyone's help. I've always done it by myself. But he kind of comes around in the end because everybody, it's a good message as well. We all need a little help now and again. Right? Yeah. And I guess he's not focused on the bigger picture, which is that they could have a career in this stuff at the moment. Yeah. It's called street at the moment. Yeah, that uh, I could see you in that red top, Joe. Oh, I don't think so, brother. No. <laughs> you got to have six-pack abs to wear that. And I, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Breaking was West Coast, and its rival movie, which, which Cannon beat them to it by a month, was Beat Street. That was the East Coast scene. And there mm. are some great documentaries out there about this stuff, which I've, I've watched a few times. and uh, It's a fascinating scene. It's the con again, the convergence of a new fashion, a new music, New dancing, you are all coming. now. I saw this kind of clothing all the time in the clubs, all the time. It was a good name, you know. Yep. Even if you're not particularly into that stuff, it was you could recognize the 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 heart in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so James has given it his best to boogie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Indeed. It's very authentic in all respects. The music, the clothes, uh, the decor. Uh, I do you love the old Beetle. The vehicles. The Beetle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Volkswagen, Volkswagen Beetle. Beetle. I guess that's because they were playing a lot of craft work. No. <laughs> um, no, the Beetle. This, I mean, when I was a kid, Beetles were everywhere. You still yeah, see were. them now, but mm -hmm. they were ubiquitous in the 60s, 70s, and obviously right through to the 80s. But that's a beat up old one. I mean, at this point, we don't have any idea. that They've not given away anything about her background. That's not till the second movie. Yeah, they don't really... Uh, yeah, we know she's a dancer, but we don't know her family background because she's driving a beat-up old vehicle and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the... Uh, James trying to get them into this um, competition that's going and get them some stuff, get some stuff going on for them, talking them up. And again, I mean, there's a bit of, you, 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 you're expecting in a scene like this, this is kind of what I liked about this movie, you're expecting these people that like, love that car, expecting these yeah. people to be really shitty. But some of them are actually quite sweet, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's more uh, when the shitty dance instructor turns up, things go wrong, because the other guests are not bad to these guys. No. They're quite open to what you know, watching them do their thing and mm -hmm. sick man, sick. sick yeah. <laughs> I don't know what pig cheese is. What's pig cheese? I do not know. <laughs> yeah, me neither. But um, so yeah, he turns up and puts a damper on it because he he absolutely doesn't want these people anywhere near his his big show that's coming up. And then they can see the the. Uh, Ozone is not happy with this guy. So this is where they're trying to bring the drama in. Mm -hmm. And everyone's going, let's get to the next end scene. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, chump. Yeah. Tell your story mm -hmm. walking, chump. Yep. I can yeah. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... So he's the guy, yeah, just about everything negative in this movie is put on that one character. Well, he's definitely uh, coming off like the elitist prick. So He is, and yeah. he's obviously um, somewhat prejudiced mm. in a variety of ways. But mainly, though, it's about the style, not about the... Right. Not about uh, immutable factors, you know. Right. Is it? So this is where they're, they're teaching the kids. This kid... Um, 
Oh, uh, he ended up having quite a career as a dancer too. Uh, it was a uh, Vidal Rodriguez, little Coco, not little Chad. <laughs> not little Coco. Chad. Not to be but, not but yeah, he he saved quite the dancing career after as well. Um, but he's he's just a kid in this one. But yeah, so this is. So what you're anyway. saying is that the only background dancer who wasn't someone who had a good career in dancing after was Jean Claude. John Claude never cut it in the dance world after this, and I'm surprised. Yeah, because he could do the splits better than anybody. That's right. Yeah, I mean that with that, <laughs> that kind of talent. That uh, hang on, and we even have a clip for that. Oh, I know you do. Probably from time <laughs> God. I don't too. know what I've done, but I do have it. Oh, it's this one. No, we can all do that. Yeah, I mean, everybody can do that shit. That guy the, was nipped do that three times a day. Yeah. Three times a day. I can do it with one leg. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great neat scene because I don't think the the guy's dancing with the the um, the walker the, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't think he actually is uh, disabled. I think oh. he, he starts walking later and dancing. <laughs> YouTube's more likely to cancel your channel for having someone faking a disability in a movie. Right, from that's possible. That's possible. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he, he's yeah. showing what you can do with props, which is another big part of that style. When you, especially as it developed, the, the use of props to to do some moves. Um, mm -hmm. I think we've got a little bit of a, more of a clip of that one. Uh, Oh yeah, here we go. Dude, check that guy out. That's crazy. Why it's... do I just think of Jimmy from South Park right now? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. It I hurts. A, <laughs> I, I was imagining a uh, uh, a gymnast, a male gymnast. You know, I could, I could see him swimming their body around like that. But, I mean, I'm assuming these guys, like this guy here, were just street dancers. They said, hey, you could do this in the movie, you know. Like this bit here. I mean, okay, now on. look, man. See, that's how I, I lost... I would not be able to get up. Uh, that's how I lost my hair doing that. I'm not talking about the hair. Look what his <laughs> legs are doing. Jeez. It's just staggeringly talented. That would talented. hurt. These guys are staggeringly it's talented. Like that would yeah. intensely hurt. Ooh, Absolutely uh, incredible. <laughs> so, uh, But I won't do that. That's what he's But I won't say. do that. Everything I would I do, do anything for you. Yes. <laughs> but I won't, but I won't do, that. do that. What was that that he wouldn't do? I never figured uh, it out. The thing do that a he radio edit under three minutes, probably. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I won't make a Jim Steinman album that doesn't... Uh, Right. Doesn't go over the top. Hey, and then be, cool, be cool about my man Jim Steinman now. Come on. Now. Oh, you know I prefer the bad from good or the bad. Oh, look at the <laughs> look at the product placement. Go if you go back one frame. Oh, was there, with, hang on with the clear breaking right on the shirt. There it is. Boom. Uh, there it is. <laughs> it is. <Boom. laughs> yeah. They got the t-shirts ready for filming. Yeah. This was apparently filmed in like twenty-one days. It was just churned out like as fast as possible the windmill yes Darius get in here Darius come on you know this is almost like a sports move I mean look at they're even getting the upgraded uniforms for their you know battle you know it, there's a lot of there's a lot of tropes you can kind of where it's not just uh taking like a an action movie this almost seems like the kind of formula for a sports movie Mm -hmm. Where you're bringing in the uh, the new in in this case the with her, she's like the uh, the new person coming to the team to try to take them to the next level, but she's not quite welcome. It's basically the Mighty Ducks. Uh, yeah. To a certain extent, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. It's it's a bit like the formula of a sports movie. Uh, the t see the the gear that they're wearing. They I don't think they had a name before when they did the first uh, Radiotron Club dance. Now she's in it. They're TKO. So it's their names, Turbo Kelly and Ozone. So they got they right. got shit made up already. You just you know because that wasn't there earlier. They got their shit together and mm -hmm. hey, let's get a jacket made, whatever. So this is the big uh, dance 
competition, audition, because there's a show. Whoever wins gets a production, a professional production. And here you go. You've got the evil head coach of the other team who's right. trying, who just doesn't like the way they play and how they do things. Right. He, sh- he should know he's never going to be able to compete with Christopher McDonald's haircut. Well, that guy, no one's going to compete with that guy's sideburns, man. Look at that. That's right. Borderline mutton chops. That's right. He's like, I'm going to, what movies are you doing? I'm doing Breaking, and then I'm doing a Civil War movie. So I need to make sure. (laughs) I'm doing one on the high seas in the 1700s, man. In a Victorian England. uh, I'm going to be Charles Darwin's father or something. (laughs) Look at that hair. Isn't that good? The poodle cut. Yeah, and so they're getting resistance. The judges don't want it. The uh, the evil dance guy doesn't want it. And they went all dressed up without all the gear on because that's what James told them to do. They get all dressed up. So I love this bit. He rips the sleeves off the jacket. Yep. Do you ever look and notice that you can see like the pre, like the perforations on the sleeve for them to be able to just rip it? Right <laughs> that's off? right. Yeah. Rip here. Yeah. It's- <laughs> It's 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 basically like tearaway pants for sports sling stuff. Yeah. It's you can see the like if you just watch the movie, you can just see the seam lines that are. And I think on one of them, they're already ready to pop and semi open. Yeah, yeah. Because if you tried that in real life, it wouldn't work as easily. No. <laughs> but yes, we've uh, the judges start to go. Oh, this is good because they jazzed it up a little bit. You know, the funny stuff. part is this was the like worst dancing in the movie for me. Yeah. And this is the part where the judges are like, oh my God, I can't stop watching. And I'm like, no, the, the stuff on the beach was way better, man. Yeah. And then yeah. the club, that club was The way club better. was great. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is much more standard stuff now. Like, it's more, they've kind of um, modified their style a bit to suit that. And now, of course, they get the special. Special okay. Uh, so this is so you think you can dance. And of course it's a big dance number with lots of people. And they do some other stuff, but that it's not street anymore. Mm-mm. No. Costumes is the big show now. Yeah, they're professionals now, which they never asked for, but here they are. But see, this is this is what happens. It, 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 this really, you know, once again back to sports, wrestling is like this. When you watch wrestling in the smaller venues, these guys try to kill each other, yep. right? Just like they do on the in the street dancing, right? Then as they start to move up, they do less and less. And it's more about the show than it is the actual wrestling. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Well, that's the thing I, I learned watching those So You Think You Can Dance shows, mm-hmm. which was they took these guys that could do this stuff and they taught them how to do other stuff. And it right. that kind of diluted what they could do. Right. You know, mm-hmm. in a sense, well, yeah, they became more professional as dancers because they were off the street. But at the same time, the reason you want to watch them is they can do all this stuff, right. all, all the great stuff. Not the, mm-hmm. I don't want to see how they do ballet, you know, <laughs> <coughs> or whatever you would call it, you know. But, uh, and I think, I think, um, during the, the, the they must have known this, they were going to do a second one because they did introduce a mid credit scene. Which was along the lines of, "Hey, James, have you heard about this new dance, the Electric Boogaloo?" Oh, no. Oh, look, we're going to do a sequel. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So there it was. That was breaking, and it was thirty-eight million at the domestic box office. Huge hit. on on one point two. Is that what you said? One point two. One point two million. So for Canon. That was like a, what they made like ten times. That's a home money run. Yeah, That's Jesus. three years worth of Canon budgets. That's right. right. <laughs> the trouble is they probably spent that money already before. Well, they uh, yeah, it. we're not even. But we're not even talking about how they already sold the. They yeah. sold the foreign rights to break in two, break in three, break in four, and break in five. Yeah. Before the first one was even shooting. I know, and um, didn't quite work out like that. But uh, yeah, that was. One of the famous things that the Canon guys would do is they would take just a a mocked up poster of the movie that they were going to make and they would sell foreign distribution rights to different people to cover their entire budget before even anything had been shot. And sometimes they sold movies that never got made. So they had no such thing as cash on hand. It was all spent long. Um, yeah, they were selling like Death Wish Six, and there was no such thing. You know, but, uh, they didn't even have when they were promoting them at Cannes. They didn't even have pictures of the people that were in them. 
I would it's love to have some up. of the like when they were doing it when they actually I know sometimes they did have the like full movie poster mock-ups with like Chuck Norris and all those guys mm. like in these fake movies. I was like, I would love to see some of those fake movie posters. Yeah. Like you nice. know they had one for Spider-Man with Joe. Oh, they did, yeah. We've got we've shown a few of them in the past, yeah. but we're definitely gonna talk about that Spider-Man at some point. It's it's gonna mm. happen. And you mentioned one earlier. Chad, we were, we uh, um oh the it? oh the captain, well, the captain america, america 91 i think yeah. that might even be the next canon film club but, oh my uh, gosh i just want to say that kelly lucinda dickie retired basically got married retired and moved out of the business i think Ozone, she married a producer yeah yeah ozone did pass away unfortunately michael chambers is still around though so uh that's good um yeah but the music in this one and i've got hell I picked this up recently at a store for five bucks. It was in VG condition as well, the vinyl. Look at you. Copy of Breaking, mm -hmm. which was like, oh, God, yeah. I haven't seen that for ages. So. Um, soundtrack was a huge, it was a big hit album. The single was a big hit for Ollie and Jerry, the Breaking. There's mm -hmm. no stopping us. Some of the tracks like Kraftwerk and Art of Noise are not on here. They, for whatever, you know, obviously licensing reasons, they were in the movie briefly, but Right. Um, but you had people like um, Ollie and Jerry, uh, the Barkeys, which were a well established funk soul group. Oh, yeah. Well established. Um, they, here they're looking particularly funky. Freak Show was a great song, too. It was a great song. Mm -hmm. The soundtrack's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Rufus and Chaka Khan. Chaka. Oh, my God. And of course, the dancers are She was with, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah the, the, the two, uh, Shabadu and Boogaloo Shabad worked with Chaka Khan. Um, Chris the Glove Taylor, who was a big club DJ and then became a producer. Uh, Ice T just gets a tiny mention here as a rap by Ice T, but it was his first album uh, track. He was on. And there was this group, Reflex, who I, the new wave group. British New Wave group, I vaguely remember from an album they had called Politics of Dancing. Um, they ended up in the in the movie and on the soundtrack. And then, of course, mm -hmm. Tour de France. Tour de France. And the Art of Noise beatbox, which is featured in the background at one point. Yep. Which was a huge... That was big. Huge uh, huge in the that, that world, that, that hip-hop mm -hmm. dance world, that kind of beat, electronic yep. beat stuff, you know. So um, let's move on to the second movie, if you guys are still okay. Hopefully everybody out there in the chat's okay. We'll race through right. the second movie, because they were going to make a sequel. Because it was a lot of the big, made so much money in the first one, they thought, we can't let this go. Right. And, and they must have shot this quick, too. Uh, they, they got it out from start to finish, like pre-production, right through to release, seven months. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, that one came out like in December. Was it November, December? The December. Fact? It had to be late yeah. in just, the year. Just before Christmas. Um, and it, I mean, seven months, even for Canon, they were pushing it quite hard. <laughs> and pretty much the same opening style. But things, so things are different now. They kind of moved on a bit. Like they had that show and obviously that's all gone. And they're back in the street again. Ozone mm -hmm. and Tarwall, I say in the street. They're back. They're not doing that show. And Kelly's off in Vegas doing some basically background dancer, showgirl thing. Um, so oh, they, man. Not showgirls. Oh, no. Well, we'll see a few more showgirls in the hospital scene. <laughs> and now we get her background, though. So she's super rich. Oh, wow. Daddy's super rich. And living in a, in a big, you know, she's got a big mansion. And they've, this, so this is a much more standard plot, musical plot, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, she's got, a, there's a fiance she doesn't want that her parents have pushed on her. Oh man, they arranged marriage. Arranged marriage with a rich yep. snob that she doesn't like she still wants to hang out with these guys they don't like that and they want her to go and she's gonna they think she's out of dancing they want her to go to princeton it's better off dancing um mm -hmm. and oh, then yeah. but then she gets a, a a gig in in paris so a dance gig in paris that she's supposed to be going for but she really wants to hang out with these guys but this is insane 
this first part of this movie. So every <laughs> it's like if you read Austin, our good friend Austin Trunick, who couldn't be here today, unfortunately, the Canon Film Guide book guy, he describes this very well in the Canon Film, film Guide. He said, um, some kind of psychedelic substance was ingested by everyone in this neighborhood because they go they go on an enormous street dance and everybody starts dancing. The telephone falls, the cops. It's like the village people. Um, it's just it's uh, it's like the freakiest thing. The whole of this downtown Los Angeles neighborhood starts dancing. No, it's a flash mob. That's right, it's a flash mob. So <laughs> let's just do the show right here. And all you see them, it's insane. I mean, you obviously wow. can tell it's a bigger budget. And then go uh, the, as was mentioned earlier in chat, the neon budget on this thing alone went up 80 million times compared to the I was original. To say, I'm just, yeah, yeah. So, so pretty much the, the entire neon budget for the world was blown in this one. <laughs> and that and if it's one of those things where this is where we talk about the authenticity break in two yeah. takes a step back because you can tell now they're going for the manufactured like kind of bright colors musical yes. look. They are. It's it's very much a standard, much more standard musical with these big dance numbers like this. There's um, uh, Sabrina Garcia who I guess would be seen as pretty cute to the, you know, 17, 18 year old guys watching the movie. If such a thing was happening, of course, if, if guys were watching this movie. Mm -hmm. um, well, it looks like that. Cause in a chat, we, uh, someone apparently had their first girlfriend and first kiss watching. Oh, two. that's nice. The old man come with good for you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> good for you. Cause it's, yeah, it, it's fun. It's still a fun movie with some great dance scenes. It's just a very different movie. Uh, and it is much more, it's much more of a West Side Story flash dance type thing. Right. And follows those tropes. But you get, uh, and thanks for being here, the old man cometh. Uh, it's got um, uh, Harry Caesar introduced, who's kind of, so this is their like, I guess you call it a community center. Yeah. Miracles. And it's in this focus of this neighborhood. There's another trope, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so they go there to do sports and dance and music, and it gives them things to do. It keeps them away from the bad things in the streets. But here's our villain. Of course. Come to tear it down so he can build a shopping center. Like that would make any money in LA. So they're the goonies trying to save the neighborhood. Yes. Got it. Like a shopping center would make any money in downtown LA these days. <laughs> um but this movie makes you believe in miracles, yes. Uh, so, yeah, he's he is now the standard villain. Let's put it that way. There's obviously standard. a lot of, yeah. I don't know what, uh, I mean, Ozone and Turbo and Kelly are kind of teaching stuff down here. I guess the, the professional gig is long gone for them. Mm -hmm. This is their focus. There's a really nice tag in it. I don't know whether that was done for the movie or whether they just shot certain... All right, so here's a question. I'm, I'm still. I'm, I've watched this movie. I grew up. What is the time jump supposed to be from the first one to this one? Yeah, isn't that... because clearly it's supposed to be more than the six months of real time that's happened between right. the release of the first movie and the second. I get. I got the feeling it was meant to be a couple of years, but they never explicitly that's say what it. I was trying. That's what I always thought that it but, was actually but, supposed to be a couple of years later. I, I think Darius will know the answer to that question. Welcome, Darius. Hey, what's up? Uh, I actually don't have any uh, idea. <laughs> I don't know I mean, the answer to that question. I don't think would... the canon people had any idea either. They no. were just like, yada, yada, it's a sequel. Because if yep. it's meant to be real time, then that's seven months. And so she's lost, the, their show ended. They've gone back to just hanging out in the streets and she's lost her gig in Vegas already. So pretty fast series of events. I mean, honestly, if that's their resume, why would we trust them to save the community center? Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> well, let's do the show right here. Let's see. Um, I, m I forgot to mention a piece of trivia. The mansion that they filmed Kelly's parents' scenes at was next door to Muhammad Ali's mansion, and he used to pop round and hang out with them. 
uh, and showed the like showed them, clay? yeah, and they showed the magic tricks and stuff that because he was into that, and so mm-hmm. yeah, he he was hanging out all the time with on the on the the uh, those scenes, the, the ones in the mansion. So That's that was pretty, pretty cool. Neat. Yeah, there's a picture out there somewhere of him with. And they the, didn't get him in the frame. No, they should have got him in the the movie with Lucinda Dickey because it was like a scene with her or something. But uh, that's pretty. Uh, it's pretty neat, you know. Yeah. So this. So now they're getting back to the the hey we're gonna we're gonna get up each other's noses again scene uh, mm-hmm. with the old uh, fight club but dancing. What's this baloney? They're break so, dance fighting. Dance fighting. We're gonna bump chests. Do you think that whole scene in uh, Zoolander was a reference to this? Uh, Did they start breakdance fighting? I think so, because that's a, become a trope now. I think if so. Th- if you think of all those Michael Jackson videos and whatever, where they're Wesley Snipes, you know, swear, right. s- squaring up to each other. I didn't think that at the time, but I was like, you know, a teenager yeah. when that movie came out. No, n- now, especially today, after you know watching this with you until it can come on yeah no i definitely think it was a reference to this i think so yeah and and now they're they're doing the fundraising and again there's tons of diversity in this neighborhood it's really it's the way it should be done uh they're doing the to save the building because if that building goes the neighborhood is gone yeah and god God forbid it should tidy the neighborhood but yeah he's hot again the costumes are great it's so colorful that would be gentrification, tidying yes. up the neighborhood. Well, that's what they mentioned that term, I think, gentrification. Um, but yeah, it, it's really neat. There's a lot of kids around here that don't seem to have a home as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, that little that little boy, he would one day become president of the United States. Uh, he would, but not yet. Not yet. Wait, so, is, she, is she a Jackson, the one in the last scene? Because no, her, she looks like a Jackson, doesn't she? She's not. I, th- I think that's uh, Sonny Bono's missus. Oh, uh, Susie Bono. But uh, Lucinda Dickey is pr- looking a bit more um, out there in this one. She's got uh, the the bikini top thing she's wearing, or whatever. It's uh, she's yeah, uh, she, she's she's um, through showing off a little bit more of her, her assets in this. Um. <laughs> So here's the what, 80s gay gang. This is the oh 80s man. <laughs> but here we go. So they're they're going down there to, to face up to the electro rocks, but they've got a new member. They've got um what's the character's name? God, I keep forgetting. Oh yeah, um Strobe. That's it. So Strobe. Strobe, Strobe is now a part of that gang, and they're going down there to face off in some way for some particular reason, which isn't quite explained. But it is an is one of the best dances in this, um, mm-hmm. and it's it's actually called Dance Combat, I think, in it. And so we'll actually show a little bit of that, because why not? That's what we do here. That's right. Every, yeah. every, by the way, look in the background on every shot. There is tagged artwork everywhere. Yeah, you Even couldn't have car. done this movie without spray cans. That car is know. awesome. Yep. It's, it's like yeah. it's from Escape from L.A. The movie right? Escape from L.A. Yeah, but are these sets or are these the real streets? I think right? they are the real streets. This is actual streets. It's a under, It's mentioned in the... Uh, Darius, it's canon. Right? They this weren't going to spend yeah. money yeah. on say, no, sets. They didn't pay Probably didn't even get permits half the time. Yeah. Look, the, real, yeah, yeah. the most expensive thing that Canon spent money on in this is probably having someone move trash cans to sit for them to sit on. Yeah, and this is why uh, Sam Furstenberg, who directed this, said he directed it like an action movie. <laughs> it's a ninja movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> Lethal weapon. That it's could not be a the, knife. Uh, that could be the set of Cyborg right there. You know, when I picture Darius, I always picture him in this scene. Somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, thank you right. I'll thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, I know you. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you got names turned off, but uh, this is actually the sequel. I am the sequel version oh, today. If you could figure out how to turn that on, I think you've got the power. No, you you just turn it back on. I mean, I could see it. I don't know about it on the. Yeah. All right. Oh, I can see them now. Yeah. <laughs> The moon chosen to yeah they go oh, away when you robo. when when he reduces us yeah right moon right. chosen to robo boogaloo that's right robo boogaloo <laughs> that's it it's happening 
<laughs> yeah, I can shrink yeah. myself back down. Now. Yes, I shrank you. Actually, yeah, now that I'm using Opera, I probably can't turn those on and off. Uh, yes, you can. You have the power. So you're Robo Boogaloo. That's the second. <laughs> that's is that the second time you've been Boogaloo? See what I did. There. Uh, well, I had my house Boogaloo <laughs> once. <laughs> what you did, <laughs> Boogalooed. <laughs> but yeah, this the dance. Um, I like. Yeah, the, uh, the, sorry, I'm just reading the Canon Film Guide. Austin was saying that that dance down the streets was a black magic parade. <laughs> They're all possessed by demons, and they start dancing. Oh, good lord! Um, yeah, that would that that would be thriller. Right, that would be thriller, but that's all. I mean, and I think the, actually the guy that was the villain in Breaking was in Thriller. He was one of the dancers in Thriller, Ben Loki. So really? Was, yeah. So wow. the bad guy was in. He was in Thriller. The, um, yeah, the Give story. No slack, in, always this, attack. Yeah, the story in this is really just to get you from one dance scene to another. Of course, but, uh, that's right. You're that low rider. Bit, and there's a bit more love interest. Turbo gets a love interest. Ozone and Kelly try to get a bit closer, but I don't think they ever quite really. <laughs> Karate kid. Karate kid. Uh, but Ozone's jealous ex is Sonny Bono, so she doesn't like Kelly. She's threatened. You know what movie this reminds me of? And, and once again, it, it, this is a common theme in a lot of movies. Um, uh, the Last Dragon. If you've ever seen that movie. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you had. Uh, you had uh, Shonuff, the Shogun of Harlem, against uh, Bruce Leroy and his bunch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Very gorgeous We're surveying. Last Dragon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're surveying the land. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Capitano Che asks, uh, how much money did Wardrobe get to spend on to put studs on all the clothing. Oh, well, I think a it's, it's, it's a canon movie. They just told everyone to bring their own bring their own clothes. clothes. I was going to say we established that already. Yeah, yeah. Deep oh, yeah. Is, pictures me in that studded leather outfit with a. See, I have my studs on the inside in the kilt. <laughs> that guy with the checkered shirt. He is the starter flag. That's right. right? <laughs> I had a pair of Vans that looked like that, man. Okay, I was a, I was a Jeff Spicoli fan back see, then. You know? Jeff Spicoli. That's right. You, see, they awesome. missed the obvious pun here. They, they could have said the name is Douglas McDonald Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, Ozone's another got his great hat for the old guy. Oh, absolutely. You know. I've had this hat I mean, since I sang R and B and R and B music in the forest. Breaking and Breaking Two have top tier hat game for nineteen eighties yeah, movies. They do. Don't you're they? not. You're not. You're not beaten. Hat and sneakers. I yeah. think Ozone took a notch down without the pimp hat. I'm you sorry. The flat I like cap the, here. I like the. I like the pimp hat. Well, you, you forget in the previous scene he was rocking the like patent leather Civil War infantry right. hat which is true with the tail attached which was <laughs> there's the hat oh, with no. the rings around the chain around it oh this this is the most bizarre scene though oh yeah where he's where they're <laughs> so, where they're both seeing their girls yeah in so, the... <laughs> so why have they got the blow two, up doll why have they got two dolls looking like roughly <laughs> like their girlfriends <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's scary like, and, don't and you then think they dance, pretty... compete with the with the dolls. Yeah, it's pretty creepy if you think about it. <laughs> this is, nice this is one doll of the you've most got memorable, there. Uh, like the the scene in that bedroom is one of the most memorable for me. Oh yeah, well we're coming up to that, but oh yeah, yeah. So Turbo's uh, getting um, he's about to break something here, and he's going to pop something too because he's found <laughs> his girl, <laughs> and he's going to lock it. I think, but yeah, who who has that? Who has dolls like that? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and he's asking Ozone for advice. Ozone hasn't made a move on Kelly, and there's been a movie or one and a half movies in, mm -hmm. so you don't think he's going to give you much advice, right? No. Yeah, it's the weirdest. Um... Yeah, the dolls are throwing me off, bro. I can't take yeah. my eyes off of them. <laughs> that one's a bit sticky. But, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that one likes to be choked. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wait, it's one doll. There's a mirror there. <laughs> oh, my God. We're saying dolls. It's yeah, one doll. I think yeah, it, is the weirdest, way. it is the weirdest sequence. <laughs> um, <laughs> <and he's gripping laughs> of course he get, grabs some ass, right? Jeez, look at that, that dude. The, uh, the villain of the last movie did that. No, nah, man. <laughs> there we go. 
Hey, he's dancing with the other girl. That's not his girl. Right? They've swapped. I didn't know they were swingers. What the uh, hell? Man? Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this, this is the most weird, toxic part of the movie, obviously. But, uh... I love that her hair stays feathered the entire movie. <laughs> right, here we Aquanet go. Aquanet was a thing, brother. Yeah. No shit. It was friggin' liquid cement. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of that on the doll, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, anyway, her current agent, because obviously Christopher McDonald was busy, uh, so she's got a new agent. She's trying oh, to get her a gig. Wait, now, yeah. Ozone. Are they talking about the Ozone layer or Ozone Park? I don't know. Um, ozone, I think uh, Ozone is his name because he likes to spray cans. Oh, of neon, oh, which destroy oh. the ozone. <laughs> she's oh. killing the ozone layer. Yeah, I see. Yeah, those yeah, chloral, yeah. Chloral that's why they call them ozone. Yeah, he's <laughs> <laughs> got the cans all of them. Yes, so oh, they're um... here. Oh, right, good. Well, what are we having? Yeah, what are we having, Darius? I don't know. Uh, what are we having for dinner? What is it? Oh, goulash. Oh, uh, yeah, hang on. Hey. So Darius did catch the graffiti of two monkeys in leather suits break dancing. <laughs> yes. That's what I'd look like if I was oh. trying to do it. <laughs> it's not Master Choli, it's goulash. I'll get yeah. smacked if I call it Master Choli. So Turbo thinks that's um Kelly's mother, and you know what? She yeah, she might as well be. She probably raised her. <laughs> she raised yeah. her. <laughs> she looks like a golden girl. She does, doesn't she? More of a, she's more of a tarnished girl i think <laughs> solid don't cold speak girl. ill of the tarnished that <laughs> yeah. way kelly's yeah. got strong hair game though yeah. she does she has got mm -hmm. strong hair again. and here's the um obnoxious <laughs> fiance which why oh, doesn't God, she just no. tell him to f off i mean yeah. I don't get it. yeah yeah I, i'll go along with my parents that have made this my fiance you know? yeah i love the distinction this movie between like you know like the the people from the streets who happen to be white and the dorky white people, the rich, yes, <laughs> like businessmen. Because there's cool and, white people and dorky white people. <laughs> right, right. This guy is a dork. But this is based upon the old uh, wealthy versus not wealthy, as mm -hmm. opposed to now everyone's divided by the the uh, physical immutables. Here it was the old rich versus poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like the candelabra. Yeah. And, uh, Which could yeah. unite everybody, of course. This is Interest. old money, right? This is yeah. like an old money mansion. Yeah. Uh, Turbo's wearing Michael Jackson's jacket as well in this scene. Oh, for real? Yeah. He was. Mm -hmm. Well, no. Okay. It just looks like it. <laughs> I mean, with what you said earlier, maybe. Well, it, it could be. He did do some other work. I think do uh, the do the bar that Michael Jackson did for The Simpsons. It was choreographed by Michael Chambers, Turbo, and he actually got credit mm. for it this time because, it, as we said earlier, he taught him to moonwalk. So he said, hey, I need to get some credit out of this work sometime. <laughs> so it could be. Uh, um, yeah, that was a weird cameo. <laughs> Simpsons episode. Yeah, yeah, I think Michael did uh, does get credit for calling it the moonwalk because it used to be called yeah. a backslide. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know if any of these people absolutely invented any of this or or the Michael Chambers invented that, but he certainly... I don't think he did. It's, no. It goes way Who back. knows? It was all back to the in the street. Well, hell, the, that kind of style goes back to the, even the old sand dances and stuff mm -hmm. with, and the soft shoe shuffle. Mm -hmm. type stuff. So this is what the, probably the major scene everyone remembers in this movie. Yeah. Is the dancing on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Dancing on the ceiling. Yeah. Yep. It's funny because yeah. these guys had worked with Lionel Richie, but that was an all night long. I'm not sure about the dancing on the ceiling mm -hmm. video, but... Uh, yeah, they, uh, they they did the uh, the rotating set like Kubrick in uh, two thousand one. Yeah, so the the everything turns except the perspective of the viewer. So the cameraman right. ends up upside down. Mm -hmm. Um, we've actually got, I've got a clip of that. So let's um, let me whip it out. Ah, yikes! <laughs> Hurt your <laughs> <That's> eyes. <laughs> I'll just whip this one out. It's not blazing sound. Excuse me while I whip this out. This out.
it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, that whole piece, and it's brilliantly done. And as Daria said, they, everything's on a gimbal, so they turned the mm -hmm. entire set and the camera around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Do probably it. the most expensive shot or scene. They do multiple Oops. cuts. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I'll have to get the stills back. But the um, there was one bit though um, in the air where uh, is it? Uh, his girlfriend, Turbo's girlfriend, comes in. Well, they had to. She's looking up at him because she's actually hanging upside down in reality. They had to tape her to the wall and tape her hair down because she's the one that's actually. <laughs> upside down, he's the right way around. So Tape quite... her hair down. No, it's yeah, the Aquanet. It's... Yeah, so it's it's quite. You uh... need more Aquanet. You do it well. Hey, I know that too well. But, you know, just mean... don't get close to a flame, right? You know, Michael Jackson. Keep your cigarettes away from their hair. Because we're all Cheeto dead my hair. hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, that sounded like it was from life experience, Joe. Keep your cigarettes away. I was a bartender for 18 years. I'm telling you, I've, I've seen people catch fire before, man. It's crazy. I gotta get back to the, yeah. But anyway, yeah, the bit that he's, um, when she comes in, she's she had to kneel her to the wall and turn her upside down. <laughs> but yeah, it's an incredible scene that's, uh, uh, and you said it was used in something else. What was it used in there? Uh, 2001, Darius, yeah. Similar to 2001. Oh, he's gone. He's eating. We can't hear him anymore. Yeah, I believe he did say 2001. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where they were doing the space station. Hubert, set. Hubert used, uh, did yeah. that. With the oh, this is Ice-T's greatest outfit. Yeah, the bondage gear. Oh, he's overheated. He's coming back oh, in no. in a minute, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they're back to the club and a bit more uh, of Electro Rock doing their stuff. Turbo, sorry, o Ozone tries to enlist uh, the Electro Rock crew to help him with the miracles, saving miracles. At this point, they're like, yeah, why should I care? You know, because mm -hmm. that would be too easy. He needs Strobe's juice, which obviously is going to be pretty painful. Um <laughs> Strobe doesn't want to give him his juice. There's a guy from the Scorpions behind him. There's I'm no one sure, like him. I'm pretty sure he was in the Scorpions, that guy at the back. <laughs> uh, indeed. Road Warrior Ice Tea. There you go. Like, I'm sure that, there he or is. maybe it's Dio. That would be Dio who looks like that. Is that Dio? This looks like I don't Dio. think he's short enough to be Dio. No. But yeah, Road Warrior Ice Tea. He's definitely, it was a Mad Max outfit for, for sure. Uh, you can hang, baby. So, yeah, I mean, they're just trying to move this to, and this is where Ozone's ex girl Sonny Bono is. Uh, his ex girl like, Sonny Bono, <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's now married to Sonny Bono. That didn't last for too long. Hey, do you know I've seen Sonny Bono's grave really in, in Palm Springs? It's pretty hmm. close to Frank Sinatra's, which is also in Palm Springs. I really hope they didn't plant a tree near it because that would be sad. That would be sad. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it wasn't particularly sad, but, uh, yeah. Because he was the uh, mayor of the mayor of Palm Springs for a while. But, yeah. Yes. That was, was okay. So, you know, equally, I've puzzled about this one too, and I cannot think what it was. What was that video? I can't remember. <laughs> so, okay. anyway. There are um, more shenanigans happen. Uh, this is where Ozone finally gets a bit of a, a his own dance scene, just him, and it's up in the roof there of that. And it's actually pretty, quite a, a, yeah, possibly one of the more suggestive dances in the movie because it's a pretty wholesome movie other than Ice, Ice T's uh, outfit but, and, the, and the dolls. The dolls are not wholesome. That's toxic. No, the dolls are very not wholesome yeah maybe no. full of holes yeah. but not wholesome that's right so they, <laughs> so they get down to um so it's funny uh austin i'm just reading austin's uh canon film club about this and he talks about the the fight scene the dance combat scene earlier in the underpass he said the fight scene that dance fight scene makes west side story look like boys in the hood right 
<laughs> Austin, you're such a funny guy. It's a shame you couldn't be here today, but uh, he'll be back for the next one, I'm sure. But yeah, they hold, uh, they're down City Hall, because City Hall, as we know in LA, is full of very reasonable people. Of course. Uh, begging for help against the um, strangely uh, offensive uh, property developer. And the surveyors are down, uh, measuring the place up. And of course, the kids don't like it. Turbo steals the lunch. <laughs> really excited about a lunchbox being stolen. Uh, rushes down the street, falls down the stairs, and ends up in critical condition in hospital. Oh, bummer. Uh, well, she's about to go to Paris, but I think she changes her mind, Kelly, because. Oh, yeah, so he has, he's gone to tell her not to go. He wants her. He needs her. And the hospital stuff, which is also batshit crazy, but has a great dance scene, mainly because of the nurses. Uh, so he's, he's unconscious at this point. He's in a coma almost. Oh, no, he's awake. Sorry. <laughs> he ends up unconscious again. He keeps waking up and being back in a coma. But, yeah, the, so the, the dance scene where... Which again is one of the most ludicrous but fun things. So these are actual showgirls. They brought in some showgirls from Vegas to do the the uh, the nurses bit. But everyone gets up dancing. People in wheelchairs. The surgeons start dancing. They're operating a guy. He dies and then comes back to life and starts dancing. <laughs> um, uh, Turbo is up and dancing, but these. Yeah, we should look. Are we you should... sure they, they came from being showgirls and not another genre of filmmaking? <laughs> uh, well, or right. dancing, even. What is a showgirl? <laughs> Horizontal I mean, bop, maybe. Yeah. I mean, what would you? What, what could you say a showgirl is? I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> so let's have a look at that. Now look, I may not be an expert, but they're not dancing. They're straight up hooking, bro. <laughs> what you're seeing is the evolution of socialized healthcare. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We can't fix you, but we can let you play some. It was a forewarning of the dances the hospitals were doing during COVID. Yeah, it's like <laughs> in the future, we'll have a thing. Oh called my God! TikTok. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, it's kind of like that dances. Those dances, isn't it? But, oh, uh, but those nurses. You know, I'm not going to complain about that scene. I was about to say, I don't no. mind watching these nurse, nurses dance as much <laughs> yeah, as the other friend. Ones He's flatlining, and then he'll start bopping right. and walking and dancing and leave mm. him lying there, and then he wakes up. So it's always <laughs> but, you know, um, I mean, if this was a, a Canadian hospital, of course, the guy, they wouldn't have, the guy wouldn't have woken up, but never mind. No. Um, so yeah, one again a bizarre scene, but, but you know, eventually Turbo, when he's in and out of a coma, he immediately gets out of hospital because he's needed down at Miracles. So you know, it couldn't have been that bad in the first place. Um, it's crazy stuff. It's absurd. I mean, that's an absurd scene. Yeah, if you think about it. So, so what you're saying is you basically like the first one better because it's more grounded. I think so. I think the, yeah. the first one, this is far too much of a standard Hollywood musical. The yeah. first one was more street. Oh, here mm -hmm. he is. She doesn't see the attraction at all. Oh, there we go. So, it's a stiff one he's got there. You know, his leg, it's in the <laughs> cast. For some reason, they have to smuggle them out. I don't think anyone really cares. They're too busy dancing outside in the car park. Right. Um, when are they going to hire some help that speaks the language? <laughs> if only the hospital escapes were as much fun in Star Trek IV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. So it's, it's Kelly, she tells um, Sonny Bono, or Rhonda, or whatever her name is. I'm not, you can't get rid of me. I'm staying because it's my choice. It's not your choice. Blah, blah, blah. So stands up to the bullying girl, the jealous girl. Mm -hmm. she needs Here to come be the bull. careful so Kelly doesn't go ninja on her. She she right? So she is possessed by the demon of soul of a ninja. That's true. 
She get that big sword out. How okay. awesome would it have been as a canon crossover if, as these bulldozers come up, she just goes ninja and just just slaughters them all, right? <laughs> slaughters them all. Well, I mean, those telephone poles. She's exactly. right, you know, dancing. Not just any kind of ninja, demon yeah. ninja. So the the yeah. electro rock crew finally came around. They've come down to help out as well, and apparently the entire brightly colored neighborhood is also here. Uh, I do love that that beatbox in the background. It's the, the big one. Nice. Uh, and for some reason, the guy driving the bulldozer doesn't want to kill the kid, which the guy developer thinks he should just do. <laughs> yeah, of course right. I'm going to drive over him and kill him. <laughs> I don't uh, think that uh, the developer understands legal liability. Uh, right. You're, that's no. pretty much murder at that that's point. Right. When he yeah. says, just you've when you've got like a time delay before an action happens and you tell him to take the action that yeah. becomes premeditated murder. You know, it's not quite Alec Baldwin. It's a little worse. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, did somebody mention Alec Baldwin? You shouldn't have mentioned Alec Baldwin, you know, fuck you. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is uh, there's a bunch of spunky kids with spunky dolls in their um, bedrooms uh, in this. Nice choice See, of word. Before, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it takes brass balls to work in this business. It does the breakdance business. It does. I love the dude in the glasses. His entire eighties movies career was probably like, we need someone who can play an accountant and just look like what people think. <laughs> and nerdy would account, be. <laughs> the bald one, dude. Yeah. a bald win and a bald one. Uh, and so the property developer realizes the jig is up. The gig is up. The gig is up. Yeah, he looks just like the old man from Bro Robocop who <laughs> runs OCP. It's right. The same look. You know, it's look. basically the same plot, too. He just wanted to bulldoze <laughs> the, <laughs> the rundown oh part of the city. <laughs> <laughs> right? The, That's true. To build his stuff. OCP wow. d- just wants to help, man. Yeah. Does that make Ozone help. Robocop in this context? Yeah. That's <laughs> right. And, and, and there's no way this, lo- this looks like a Janet Jackson video at all. Well, no, well, there's no way a Janet Jackson video looks like this. Let's we are a part of a rhythm nation. I like how he's magically healed to the point where all his uh, broken limbs don't even have casts. Right. Anymore. He was in a cast. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the cast and a cast. Wait, this right. is the military, right? The Red Berets. I got the. I got one last. Clip. It's the Raspberry Could be a Beret tribute Beret to the Guardian Angels. Of course, that's in New York, though. Yeah, this is this is for Prince. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that group still exists. Probably. If you know who I'm talking about, the Guardian Angels, they used to ride the subway. Uh, in New York. I think they do. And I think they've had a bit of a revival for some reason. Yeah, I don't think they're on the subways, though. They're not so silly. They'll get no. arrested for trying to help. Right. Yeah. Listen to Dickie's looking good in this one. She always looks good, bro. But yeah, this is well, your standard. You this is your West Side Story uh, type finishing dance scene. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the Miracles is saved. An impromptu large dance scene breaks out. Amazing how they got the choreography together for that in a few minutes. Um, that guy's so angry. Because that's guy. his daughter, and he doesn't that's like his daughter she's out dancing there. with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Ice T comes out for a bit of rapping, but he explains the entire plot of the movie in one rap. Yes, in one rap. Uh, yeah, and that's Call pretty much song. it. <laughs> they all lived happily ever after. Little did he know he'd be playing a cop years later. Then we, yeah. we got little and little MJ over here, even wearing Indeed. the. Uh, oh yeah, now that's an MJ yeah, outfit, no yeah. doubt. Indeed. Oh my god, <laughs> I forgot about. <laughs> They've single-handedly raised one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which Golan Globus promptly came in and took. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's four movies we can make out of this. 
Well, but, those four movies well, we've no, already made. No, up. there's four movies and three weekends of cocaine that we can get out of this movie. <laughs> so we're. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, just the big nuns. So it ends up, everyone's happy. I still don't think Ozone and Kelly really got it on. Like, I don't know, did they? I don't think so. There's supposed to be a couple. But, um, <clears throat> well, he, but yeah. she, he realizes what she's known all oh, along. These hats. <laughs> do you see the hats? The white hats a lot of people are wearing. They're Pepsi hats. No kidding. Yeah, so... Right. Cannon obviously had a little bit of a dad throws in 50 G's. Yeah. And now they're littering yet again, destroying <laughs> the ozone layer and putting plastic and rubber everywhere. Save this our streets. Carol Lynn Towns, actually, a really good soul singer. But, uh, she's in the first, she has a track in the first movie too. But, um, so it's a cameo. Kind of, yeah. The, the, their uh, entire dance outfits look like the four highlighter sets you buy at a Walmart. Yeah, you know, where they come with the hot pink, the neon mm -hmm. yellow. Mm -hmm. pink. Yeah, yeah, electric uh, pink. Yeah, Pizza Hut's colors. Yeah, electric boogaloo. But everyone ends happy like they do in most musicals. Uh, so that was hey, electric man, musicals. Uh, musicals are. Uh, they're a good genre. You've got your good ones, yeah. you got your bad ones, but uh... and just a quick peek at um, the sound. This this was the title track for by Ollie and Jerry again, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, but also featured in the movie is a, a track that I'd forgotten about. A guy and called that, George uh... Krantz, a German electric. Mm -hmm. uh, piece really good actually din da da not to be confused with da 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 which was right. a different german song right uh, but this was apparently a, a huge hit on the the dance scene back in the day it's a piece of electro dance stuff george Krantz, the one where he says din da da, din din da, da, da. da. yes so which it's pretty neat still get sampled from time to time hugely sampled it's a actually really neat track i was listening to it earlier a couple of times I'd forgotten all about it. It was a one-hit wonder kind of thing. That uh, he looks electric, they, static electric with that hair. Yeah, breaking and ah. entering. Breaking and entering was the was a documentary that had been made that breaking Michael Chambers and Chaba do were in and Ice T were in, <laughs> which is where Michael. This is where Michael Jackson saw uh, Turbo doing the uh, shot Boogaloo Shrimp doing the uh, moonwalk. So. Huh. And Ice T was in it as well, so it's mm. a pretty early document of the eighty early eighties scene in in LA. No, Courtney that's a is here. double entendre that I won't explain. Indeed, breaking break in and entering. That's right. It's actually a crime. Um, <laughs> All right, so that was uh, and not for the reason you think. Let me hide this. Let me hide the screen. Welcome, I Courtney. I can't hear anything. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear, hear me? You. Yes. Yeah. I can't Loud hear you. So hold on. Courtney's here just as we're finished, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She's always there at the end. He always shows up in the end. So yes. That, that was that was breaking and breaking too. And I have to say, thoroughly enjoyed watching them again. I watched them about three times each prepping for this show. How'd you watch Break the first one? Because it's not streaming anywhere. It isn't. No, that's true. But you can find mm. Yeah, you can find it. You can it. find anything you, you want. Find you it. Enough now, these these are movies that are actually Yarr. relatively hard to get on physical media. I don't think they're particularly mm -hmm. easy to get. You'd think oh. now that Amazon owns it's because Amazon owns MGM, which I think is the rights holder for most of these after the various bankruptcies of Golan Globus and Kama. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Amazon's not into making physical media versions of anything right. they no, own. No, that's true, yeah. That's well, true. Uh, you can, it's streaming, Breaking 2, and I already queued it up for after the show uh, to watch with uh, my girlfriend, but the Ele Breaking 2 is on Max, and then it also shows up as Amazon, like Prime Video by way of Max. Right. They, they have those link-ups all over. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's being hosted on Max for streaming, but I think if you have Prime Video, uh, you and, can watch it. If you also and have Max. if you take Jack Sparrow type steps, you could find all of it. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. 
So, Alan, we, we did briefly at the beginning, uh, thanks for joining us, Alan, uh, hope you're enjoying the show, Alan Bailey. Rapping, rapping was entitled officially a sequel to Breaking 2, but there is, there's no plot or story connection at all. Uh, I think um, Shabadoo might be in it, or Ice T might be in it. Ice T's probably, I think, yeah, Ice T's in it, but there's no, he's not even playing the same character. If there's only if there was only a way we could look and see. Yeah. So yeah, I've got some kind of database on the internet. Of yeah. Well, I've got notes here, but I've <laughs> so, I've got like nine pages of notes when I prep for this thing. Uh, but yeah, so I didn't I didn't want to include it in this show because first of all, three movies is a lot to do in one show. The lead uh, in rapping was Mario Van Peoples. He was, yeah. Oh, um, hey. So we we will talk about rapping in a future canon film club down the line, uh, but because it's it bore, even though it's called a sequel, it had no connection to the others. I decided to, to leave it out for brevity's sake, and to give it, um, we'll give it its own canon film club down the road somewhere. Yeah, but Mario Van Peoples mm -hmm. was in it, so he was in the Hebrew Hammer. He was. <laughs> mm -hmm. And for anyone who's seen that wonderful Christmas slash Hanukkah movie. I mean, That's... his best work was New Jack City. But Come on, bro. The Hebrew I Hammer know. sounds like... Hi, hey, Courtney. The Hebrew Hammer sounds like a, a euphemism for a well-hung wrestler. I mean, well, yeah. the yarmulke, yeah, that's, right? That's, that's, that's a, they get that joke out of the way early on. That's one of the funniest, fun, Cor funniest holiday movies ever. Yeah. Oh yeah! Hi, hi, Courtney. Hi, Courtney. You, you're trying to find other glasses because these ones were fogging up. Unfortunately, we're starting to wind up soon. But I'm glad you made it, and I hope you're okay. I can rap, you know, to like, or I can well, do give us a rap. dancing. Actually, I can't do mm. that anymore. No, yeah, now I have I a story hear. about. Oh my god, look at my hair! <laughs> I have a story about break dancing. Um, do it. When I was in high school, I can't do it anymore. Look, I have boobs now. Um, <laughs> when I was in <laughs> high school and I had no boobs, um, I used to be able to do the worm really well. Like I could yeah. worm all the way down a hallway. And we went on a, a band yep. trip uh, up to this one was, it was Toronto or Quebec, Quebec City. And uh, one time at Bank in the hotel. No, yeah, exactly. Is this better? <laughs> no, my hair's a disaster. Whatever. There we go. It's all need Aquanet. I need Aquanet. <laughs> um anyway so we went to this uh thing and they had a wedding downstairs in the uh, hotel and we're kids at night and so we decided we're going to go crash the wedding so we can get more booze we could get booze at the store up in quebec anyway but the way that i made it happen is i just went in right to the dance floor and i started doing the worm and the whole place cleared <laughs> It was like that scene in Romeo and Michelle's oh, school. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing worse you're, than that. It was you like didn't have your glasses in your pocket. You head to the dance floor. That, right? I, didn't, I only that. had reading glasses back then. I didn't have like both okay. types. So that's how I used to break all my sunglasses. I would forget to take them out. And then I, and I, mean, then I, I would do that. Before yeah. flying off and losing them somewhere. <sighs> But That's why I have to... like 200 pairs of sunglasses now because uh, I started worse. a bad habit of replacing them. <laughs> this is bothering me, my hair. There's nothing I'm worse when, you, than when you head to the dance floor and everybody else heads off ah. at the same time. I'm just so E. Clay says uh, Mario's <laughs> brother Luigi Van Peebles is better. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was it Ice T or Ice T that was in this movie? I Ice T. Okay, I saw Ice T at Lollapalooza. I'm not sure Ice Cube's ever worn bondage gear. Oh, I should have put on my um my jacket in his honor. Your bondage with the, jacket. With all the Your studded, bondage studded, jacket. Studded, no, the studded. This, like, no, um, this we want to see. This I want to see. <laughs> you saw right? from Halloween. You guys were fans of it because it's very low cut. Yeah, uh, just when you said the bondage jacket. That was awesome. Yeah, no, that would have been more like a leather. Apparently, by the way, there it. is a documentary about Boogaloo Shrimp called the Boogaloo Shrimp Dro Shrimp <laughs> Documentary. Wow. It was released in 2019. I haven't seen it. It's about Michael Chambers and this stuff that he did. Because he was in, he did, he really perfected the robot stuff. And he was in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, Robot Bill. And he also did the Urkel bot. That was Michael oh, wow. Chambers in Family Matters. So there you go. But that was Michael Chambers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Shout Factory does have both movies on one Blu ray disc. 
but there's not many extras on it either. Well, it's canon, so there's not a lot of extras on anything. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I was muted. I met I met Steve Urkel too. I'm like, I got oh, all these did? stories. Yeah, my friend, um, he was a, a cousin of someone I went to school with. What about Bob Urkel? Isn't he somebody? Um, who? No, that's Bob Euchre. <laughs> oh, he's a game. He's a card hey, game. Hey, I think I'm. Uh, I thought you were going to play my intro so I had some time to work on my hair. I'm not that I'm that vain. Do I really yeah. care? Am I anyway, fine? How is your day been, Courtney? It's been great. Can't you tell? <laughs> no, it's been okay. So, Courtney, what do you think about these two movies? Because everyone else is. They're like my favorite '80s cheese ball like flicks ever, and mm. I missed it. And I was actually going to watch it. I uh, watched the second one last night because I don't remember too much of the second one. I don't remember it being that rem well, remarkable. It's funny. It says it right there. Which is I think the others have said it and, and they all get their chance to say it again. I think the second one is nowhere near as good as the first one. It's much more like a Hollywood musical as opposed to a street thing. Has a couple of great dance scenes, but other than that, it's pretty forgettable. The first one is where most of the real action is. Yeah, the first one is like a a cool cheesy like they're fighting over it. you know what I mean? like they yeah, fight well, with their break dance i think darius's computer is rebooting again so we lost him oh it's chad chad chad's, chad's oh, going dude chad. yeah where's chad, chad going? bail for dinner oh, oh i thought shit. you said the chat was gone I was like, oh little chad? chad sorry i didn't realize you were <laughs> oh, I, i'm sorry there was probably a private message i didn't um I, i'm so busy controlling all the stuff i don't look at them chad little chad thank you for being here uh um, you can you and uh, Chad stream a lot, do a lot of gaming streams, yeah. Yeah, yeah, every Tuesday. Yeah, is Chad Chad's channel? He's got a channel, yeah. Because yep. every I Friday, looking. nine o'clock Eastern, on Ascendant Art. Yeah, was the name of Art. Him and uh, Slender Man do a podcast. It's, yeah, it's and, Ascendant Art. Because I was looking yep. for Little Chad, and I got a different guy entirely. <laughs> you can find the, him with uh, Slender Dad, Brahma Bull, and every once in a while, uh, one of one of our favorites, good old Mad Mardigan. Oh yeah. yeah. Mad loves me. I actually have a clip from one of the, I think it's the first episode ever of your show when you put me and him on the bottom together and I started making him very uncomfortable because he was next to a woman and I was rubbing the air to make it seem like I was rubbing him and touching him. He did not like it. <laughs> but it's great. I love yeah. Mad though. I, I, I think I found Ascendant Art. Did you? Uh, channel Thanks. here we go. Yeah, so we'll I'm just throw that in. link up. Okay. I'm gonna throw that link in there. So, everybody, this is Lil Chad's channel, Ascendant Art. The link is in there now. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be seeing him some more of these streams going forward. But thanks for a, being here, Lil Chad. Appreciate it, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm mm. having a delay a little bit. Um, I have a suggestion, and maybe the chat could give us some uh, feedback too. But since this movie reminds me of um, just back in the day type movies, have you ever thought of doing like a rad versus like cleaning the cube, like BMX and, and skateboarding type thing? Doing any of those movies? Or uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Are they not good enough? Are they not music related? Uh, well, the no, uh, these are canon films, of course. So this series oh, canon. is canon. So they wouldn't fit into this. That's not to say they couldn't be done as... I mean, I do other movie streams too. Rock and Roll uh, High School. Well, Rock and Roll High School is the sort of movie I would do as a it's only talk and roll type thing. Um, but there's just so much stuff. Yes, yeah. yes. I, the answer is yes, I could do those. And one day <laughs> I definitely might. do. Much as he loves music, he could definitely do Fast Times at Ridgemont High just yeah, for the soundtrack. It's, it's, I mean, it's, Billy it's, Squires on it. Come on, uh, not beyond the bounds of reason that one day we will do those. But this I think series Nick will is probably canon. do it before you got you yeah. do. Yeah, uh, uh, rock like and roll, toxic. Uh, rock and roll high school. I could see us doing in the next two or three months, perhaps as a music movie. I uh, need to figure something out with my Monday. Uh, I need to get them to switch me to another day because it, yeah. it's off hit or miss and the traffic is always bad. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and we miss we miss you when you're not here last. But I miss uh, it. I get really sad and I'm like listening in the car and I can't write all my funny comments. And <laughs> but I'm glad you like these movies and that you know you were aware of them, which is great. Um, Imp, Imp, what did you think about those going through them again there? 
Uh, yeah, I was corrected what I said before we got on before we went live, but I don't recall ever seeing them. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, it just was one of those things growing up. I just didn't really care about when these came out in 84, I would have been eight. I cared yeah. about science fiction stuff and fantasy and GI Joe and Transformers. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it wasn't that. something that really resonated with me. It had nothing to do with anything really just just as a kid it just wasn't for me makes sense like I, said, I was eight yeah it makes sense i wouldn't say it was my my uh greatest love either i i have a bit of a I mean, but for here's the thing it. though is they're very much so in encapsulation of what early 80s was kind of like in certain genres and you know subcultures that were starting to come up oh yeah oh yeah oh, i think the, as we've said a couple of times i think kind of nailed it especially in the first mm -hmm. one you know, which is surprising for them yeah and i am i do love that style of dancing even though dance movies are not my thing and i do like all of the early electro hip-hop stuff um joe what's your summing up oh yeah stuff? um I've, I've seen bits and pieces of these movies never really uh zoned in on them but uh need to see that that's uh uh uh, the starting point for a couple of actors that I didn't know were in this movie, man, the mm -hmm. agent and uh, the DJ specifically. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I dig a musical just as much as the next guy. Um, so not at all. No, well, no, 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 no. Actually, if it's good and you this, this looks like it, it's good. I mean, look, I've seen my wife's favorite movie uh, for, two favorite movies are musicals. It's Phantom of the Opera with Gerard Butler and uh, freaking um, The Greatest Showman with Hugh Jackman in it. She loves both of those movies and they got really good soundtracks, you know? So Yeah, um, uh, Alan's made an interesting comment that you know, he was a break dancer and later, later a hip-hop DJ and along with sci-fi alternated between breaking and its alternative Mm -hmm. uh, Beach Street, which wasn't the canon, but that was the East Coast one, which came out a month later. It would be interesting to do a side by side on them sometime. Mm -hmm. and see the difference because it's got the two different styles completely. Yeah. yeah. Well, one more thing about musicals. Imp uh, Imperatus, have you ever seen Grease? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite. Uh, I mean, that's, one of my favorites. That, that's a Grease. universally well, loved movie, fun. right? There. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a fun movie. Yeah, I was all about the music, the music mm -hmm. movies. Yeah. It's got to be kid. good. I mean, Rock of Ages, that one about the hard rock stuff, I was really expecting more out of. And, you know, it, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. You know, Grease is, is just such fun. But, you know, but I anyway. love Grease. <clears throat> I watched Flashdance. I liked Fame. I liked um, A Chorus Line. I liked all those movies. But yeah. my mom was a dancer and an aerobics teacher, so she was influential on that you know so yeah oh that's that's yeah fair point yeah it's as i say i mean i i have a bit of a soft spot for breaking i'm not so fond of breaking too but i do like the dance stuff and i do like mm -hmm. a lot of the music as movies are they the greatest movies ever made no but i applaud no. canon for for nailing that first one particularly with the right people from the street not and they, just, they they did the yeah. smart thing and took the handcuffs off and let them do their thing. Yeah, so right? that, I, I applaud them for that, and they did very well for them. As little Chad said, it probably that money was spent on four movies it already made and <laughs> hadn't funded. <laughs> you know, I'm curious. Right. Um, the people on the panel that have seen the movie, uh, were you like, did you grow up in a city kind of environment or no? Well, I was next to a city, but it wasn't anything like that. So, I mean, it, it wasn't. Yeah, it's, it's I think. Not, Maybe you, like pe certain people might have been more interested if they were closer. You know what I mean? An urban like, environment. Like, yeah. Yeah, urban. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and it's a very, it is a very. Although a lot of the music was influenced by European ele electronic stuff, mm -hmm. it's a very American thing. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen with Beat Street, it's a very East Coast thing, and there's a very West Coast thing. Uh, so that stuff was quite foreign. Are you trying to say they but, started the rap battles right here. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's a I very, it's a very American style. <laughs> These are all American styles, although a lot of the music is influenced by European music. But uh, mm -hmm. it's a very American thing, yeah. So uh, we watched it, but we weren't living in it. Mm -hmm. We should rap battle thing. one day. It would be really fun. Um, I can barely remember my own name. Never mind make up our rappings. 
I'm sorry to interrupt one more time, but I just forgot something. I was talking about my mom, who's an aerobics teacher, and my brother just texted me to say, hey, mom and I are watching you. <laughs> so, <laughs> hi, mom. Hi, we mom. Say, hi, hi, mom. mom hi, mom. It's a hi, shame. Be that Betsy is her name. Hi, Betsy. It's a shame we're about to wrap up. Hi, mom, Benny. Mom, Courtney's mom. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad you could she make it last. You. She'd love you. Everybody loves me. They do. <laughs> but I'm glad you could make it. And Joe, and, and thank you too for being here mm -hmm. again, supporting us as usual. And, and it's always great. It's always a highlight of the week for me to hang out with you guys. Good. We're going to start over. Um, and thank you, everyone that's been in the chat today, or both on YouTube. And thank you to everyone for watching on Rumble. Thank you to those who super chat. Thank you to the mods, D Bud Martin. Obviously, fabulous uh, mod. It does a lot of great work. Uh, well, I say work. He doesn't get paid for it. <laughs> After buying him a drink in Vegas, if he's a. Uh, and Darius, thank you for being on here too, and little Chad. Uh, appreciate it, guys. It's been a lot of fun today. Uh, everyone in the chat, you you uh, you made us. You made an old man very happy by being here for us You're today not old. and watching this. So. You're like thirty. Well, in my mind, but you know. So uh, next week's show, uh, I'm actually thinking I might do another movie. It won't be canon though, and and I don't believe anything you're going to say. Yeah, what so don't movie? advertise. I don't it believe yet. a thing you're going to you say. Do not I have been yet. I have been friggin' advertising breaking for like a month and a half. Until the thumbnail is done and the stream is up, it could change. <laughs> but I'm, my Barfly intention is, is breaking. Well, my intention, is that week, canon? my intention next week is to do a science fiction movie I've wanted to do for a long time, which is called Forbin the Colossus Project. Hmm. Oh, I, I that's fancy Dr. Forbin. For, Forbin the Colossus Project. It's a very prophetic science fiction movie about AI. Mm -hmm. So that is the plan for next week, unless things change. Uh, but also later tonight, tonight, later, you'll see me on Comics Division as usual for Monday Night Meltdown. Uh, round the houses quickly. Courtney, what are you up to? Um, well, I wanted to say, Mom, I did finally get your Valentine's Day card. Um, thank you. Very late. <laughs> I just got it. Um, but I wanted to let her know I got it. So I am going to do a couple uh, live streams. Just chill, kind of talking to the chat and stuff like we do and getting to talking about music and stuff. I made you one, uh, a short one after this. I'm not positive yet. All right. Um, I have to talk to somebody because I just walked in. And uh, other than that, I am. Uh, I have some music things that I'm. I'm kind of working on a little bit, like like uh, writing some stuff too, which is not the normal style that I write in. Well, we look forward to hearing that when it finally yeah. hits us. Yeah. So, um, and other than that, I'm with you every Monday, but I may not be here next Monday because I, unless I can see that movie. Well, I'm, I'll hang out and listen, learn about the just movie. Hang out. You know, Why not? Yeah. Just hang out. You'll see the stills and also clips. And, yeah. well, I'm, I'm very Get educated, young lady. Because um, yeah. Dr. Forbin Colossus is a YouTuber who is my very good friend. Well, it's based, that name based is based on that, on that movie, yeah, Forbin the Colossus Project. So, Hang out. It's fun. Well, we have fun. It doesn't matter that you've seen it. Doesn't matter. I mean, I'm at a 50 50 rate right here on what I've seen and what I've had on these shows. So, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, thanks for being here, though, Courtney. Imp, what are you up to? I wish I was here for the whole thing. I'm bummed. Uh, tomorrow, I will be on Brahma's channel, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, 10 p.m. That is uh, gaming with those guys. It'd be myself, Brahma, Chad, Hora Amarada, Slender Dad. Maybe mad. Um, other than that, I'm also going to try to stream this week. Now that inventory is over, I'll have a little bit more sanity. Mm -hmm. uh, just see if I can find someone to join me because I'm not a fan of streaming by myself. I don't think I'm all that entertaining when I'm by myself. So Nonsense. I'm a good yeah. person to just sit with you while you game. I did that with Joe before. Remember, yep. Joe? I just sit yep. I, I invite everybody on my gaming streams. You can all yeah, one of these days I'll hop in there and harass yep. you. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. uh, well, thanks for being here, buddy. I really oh, yeah, appreciate always. it. Uh, Joe, what have you got going on? Oh man, the schedule's uh, up on the uh, uh, on the page. The only thing I would uh, point out to people is that I will not be doing State of the Atmosphere this Wednesday. My pop culture show will be back in a week because I am taking my best friend to see Dune Part Two uh -huh. in IMAX, and not just a regular IMAX in a dome IMAX. We oh, have one geez. here at a place called Cyport. Oh, it is huge. Sick. 
Huh? Too big, I'd be like I, I nosing. A... Say, yeah, my wife won't do it again. I took her to see. Uh, I took her to see. Uh, what was it? Um, uh, Oppenheimer. Uh, and, and she said, I'm never doing it again unless I take that motion sickness stuff, whatever is the hell it's called. Is that where they do like planetariums and stuff? Yeah. Like that type of thing? Okay. I yeah, it's, it's huge. Really this crazy. thing is so. huge. <laughs> it, it's a big dome. That's what and she said. So uh-huh. we are going to go see that on Wednesday. But the next time you'll see me is tomorrow night, 10 p.m. I will be playing. What game am I playing tomorrow night? Uh, oh, football. I'm playing Madden. Oh. I got a couple of teams that... Cool. Are ready for the Super Bowl. Whenever, whenever I get teams ready to play a Super Bowl, I save that for. Uh, I, I let them pile up, and I've got two Super Bowls to play tomorrow night. So yeah, Good. we're going to be well, playing we'll that tomorrow night. Check Joe's channel out, everybody. Isn't yep. tomorrow uh, another premiere? It's uh, only one night only. The um, uh, William Shatner thing or something. I don't know. Yeah, if that I think could, be, here, could be. Could be. Uh, or Wednesday, I mean. Cavatino is saying that the Colossus movie is on Vimeo for free. So I guess really um, okay. So if you haven't seen it, that's where to find it. I'll uh, if anyone. If you want to yeah. watch it with me, I'll watch it. I don't like watching stuff. Alone. So at that I will have I'll to wrap up, Courtney. I will have to wrap up at that. Thank you, everybody, mm-hmm. again out there and on the panel here. Have a great week, everyone, and take care and keep on rocking because that's the most important thing. <laughs>